Hello, hello. Hey there, hi there, everyone. How's it going, Zizivivification? Chunt, Bailey, Art Vandalay, Zivern, June, July, August, French Fry Apocalypse. Creator, creator. Hey, good to see ya. You know what they say, jack of all trades, master of the card jack of all trades. And that's me. We mastered that card. We sure done done did. And Wide Dog Studios, what do you call the market trader who ended up at the head of a convent? Jack of all trades, master of nuns. Let's get some uh, let's get some Slay the Spire on screen here, everybody. Hold on. Appreciate the Hades jams, but it's time for some spire. Where are we? Brender M, thanks for three months of support. Miskatonic Blue with lucky number 13. And Labana with 17 months. Lastly, Rabak, thanks for nine months of support. And 9% of the way to becoming a channel cutie. Heck yeah. I've always enjoyed the, the little startup tune, I guess you could call it. The, the bloop. For the Mega Crit logo when Spire boots up. It's definitely a classic. Right there. Talk about a a delightful audio design for one's program. Really well done. Can't help but appreciate that every every time we come back to the Spire, which is a, a daily ritual of ours to ascend this gorgeous tower. Because it is such a difficult game to to master and a uh, continually changing landscape every time one enters the spire. You never really know if you're going to have a delightful powerhouse of a run, uh, a run where you have to fight for every inch of ground that you can gain, or a run where things go disastrously south. You never know if you're going to walk a path you've seen a hundred times before or a path that has never been presented to you. It's quite a quite an interesting experience. An like ever-shifting labyrinth. Yeah, it might be a run that dies on floor six or even a run that dies on floor one. Scragganaw, thanks for 22 months of support. And Jamat, thanks for 15 From my initial thoughts on Wild Frost, the game has some delightful depth to it. Uh, the the tactical combat and the positioning and timing therein really is everything for Wild Frost, such, such that I would call it uh, almost a a tactical positioning game first and a, and a card game second. Really, the the drawing and playing of the cards is almost. secondary to the to the units and their turn order and where they're placed especially since you can dynamically change your positioning each and every turn any chance we'll have another month of boss swaps i wonder if boss swaps might make it easier to acquire certain certain hard-to-master cards as we get down to the last few. For example, boss swapping is more likely to give us a cursed key run, which could help us with mastering certain curses. It's an interesting, interesting thought. I definitely haven't been in much of a boss swappy mood of late. Most of our runs do not swap relics currently. 
Routine Sadness, thanks for the 38 months of support and the Prime sub. It's true, Targaryen, I was there. Um, okay, what character are we on here for Spire? Any whom? See, the bot seems to have revived, but is... Oh. Cool. I think the bot might be back already. Exciting, if so. And it looks like it's time to play Defect, which is also exciting. I'm still reeling a little bit from this last silent run. We got double Mind Blast successfully uh, conquered. So uh, to those of you who had Mind Blast as the last card to be mastered, alas, or last of the colorless cards even, to be mastered, uh, sorry to disappoint. It was easier than I expected. Uh, yet another colorless card victim of the Sensory Stone event. If we can get two of the same card, well, why not? And to be able to have them both be upgraded with Molten Egg, that was just a, a bonus, really. Is that run marked for YouTube? Oh, you bet your butt it is. This one was uh, a totally wild time. We duplicated Neutralize and managed to master it as well. That's a great run. And yeah, we also skipped the Bloody Idol, and it paid off huge. Which allowed us to buy the Dolly's Mirror. This was a fun run. It was a fun run. But how fun will this run become? As the defect. Let's see. What do we have going on today in the Spire? Got ourselves a Guardian Act, which is usually a nice, easy exit from Act 1. We could go relatively Elite Heavy here. Four Elites, even including the Burning Elite, is a fun option. This would be a nice way to do a 250 Gold Start, perhaps. Um, but there's also a path up the far left. Let me just map out a couple quick options here. This path up the far left is a fun one. And then there's an optional elite here. There's also... Oops. The ability to dip into a fire, uh, a shop here and get three elites, three rest sites this way. I'll mark this in yellow. And then the option to just get an additional elite. There we go. Uh, I guess this is yellow, actually. Additional elite instead of the first fire, if we wanted to do four elites. Or even have an earlier first elite instead of the fire for some reason. I don't know why you would want to do that. <laughs> Server's back down, okay. That's that's kind of what I expected, so I didn't, uh, didn't want to hope too hard there. Hey there, Rinviri. Neuromania says, really looking forward to the Chrysalis, Metamorphosis, and Transmutation runs. I am very excited to show off Transmutation. Extremely so. Extremely so. By the way, Thorindor, I don't, don't know if I thank you for three full years of support. Thank you so much. And Routine Sadness coming in with 38 months and the Prime sub. So also, maybe this option for the Burning Elite. Let's let's actually look at the starting options here. We do have a gold op gold start option, one hundo gold, not two fifty like I was hoping, but still makes uh, taking either the yellow path or even going to this fire pretty reasonable. Or uh, not fire, the shop. Excuse me. Going to the first shop here before the Burning Elite. Although I I think we would prefer. For two, if I take 100 gold, go yellow path here. We'll get a rest site, 
get to buy a relic or some useful cards or potions at this shop, whatever we need for the elite fights, and then knock out uh, one, two, three elites pretty easy with several upgrades to come. That seems pretty reasonable. Otherwise, we're going to trade away our money and gain 14 max health. Actually, don't underestimate this option, a 99 gold mango, so to speak. We might go four elites if we did that, or perhaps go green path here and uh, just grab the first upgrade and three elites. But in any event, uh, I think the defect, at least when it comes to Ascension 20 heart runs, really makes or breaks their runs based on the final act, and uh, having more max health for that final act can make a very big difference. Yeah, think of that as a 199 gold for a mango. That's right, because you have to consider the opportunity cost, right? Instead of, instead of starting with 199 gold, we'll start with zero, but we'll have 14 more health. thing is in Slay the Spire, it's often better to make short-term investments rather than long-term investments because you want to start so-called snowballing your run. But finding your way into a, a long-term win condition is also a completely valid route here. It's interesting. Wish I could play sort of both of these runs side by side and see how they go. It's the exchange rate between gold and max health anyway. That's a, that's a question that's, I think, very difficult to answer. We can try to, to boil down each of these options into some kind of single value numerical quantity. Like we can try to, we can try to place a, a gold valuation on the other options of a colorless card or the max health or even try to make an average for the boss relic. But the gold itself has a variable value. Gold on floor 1 is not the same as gold on floor 17 is not the same as gold on floor 50. They each have a different potential to them, a different use value, a different uh, impact they can have on the run. And I think that really complicates any attempt to, to try to make things single dimensional. I think we would, have, by definition, Rinviri, have to value this at 100 gold. This one's an easy one to convert into a gold value, right? This is, this is 100 gold. And if we're valuing things in gold, it's, it is worth 100 gold. It's worth 100 floor 1 gold. Whereas this, this is minus 100 floor one gold. Oh, it's so complicated. Anyway, I, what I'm going to get at is I want to go yellow path. That's what I decided. Maybe if we're really lucky or unlucky, perhaps we find a shop in the first question mark room and then we take a different path. But uh, yellow path's where I want to head. And I think we actually want the events slightly later. Which means we want to go here. I'm going to do two question marks. I want them to be here and here, not here and here. Uh, as there's relative likelihood of a negative consequence, something like a curse, and I want to have that for less fights, for example. Okay. A classic lousy turn one. Uh, this is really all up to dual cast here. Dual class cast will strike randomly twice. I think we have to be able to kill one of them, right? Because if the front one is struck twice, we can kill it with a strike. If the back one is struck once, we can kill it with a strike, so... No matter what, this is going to let us kill one of the lice. It's the front one, which is not the one we wanted, but that's okay. We'll take three. Three is a happy number. And ultimately, three damage for the first fight is pretty good. get a potion, a skill potion, not a very good potion, but a potion it is nonetheless, and oh no, a glacier when I want to take damage cards. It'd be a shame if I had to skip this glacier to take a damage card. Oh wait, there are no damage cards, and that means I can take whatever the heck I want. Give me this. 
normally I'd, if there was like a, a sunder or a, a ball lightning, anything that does any amount of real damage, I'd have to hem and haw here about uh, not taking the, the big block card with frost orbs on it. But in this case, I'm pretty dang happy to have a glacier from our first card award in a complete absence of damage options and better yet in a gar act with the guardian as our boss here we definitely want to have some block cards thinking about your act one boss right from the get-go is definitely something i strongly recommend hateful nate thanks for 31 months three ish metric years and lone wolf and cub thanks for the one actual year the 12 months lastly e of pi thank you for 41 months of support. Here's your Twitch Prime reminder, everybody. Use it or lose it. Anywho, pretty thrilled with the Glacier. Glacier is long-term just excellent for defect. A big wall of block behind which you can set up powers or do really anything that you want. I'm going to be a little greedy here. Normally, I would say you should defend, defend, zap. Turn one against Jawworm in this situation. With a Glacier in the deck, I think we can sit back and be cozy. I also think that I might want to keep this Lightning Orb around for a bit longer. So instead of playing Dual Cast, I'm going to play Strike. Yeah, I figured... They don't do any damage this turn. A bit sad. Aha! Now we dual cast it. Twenty-two, you say? I think I can block for that much. Easy peasy. Okay. We took a little bit of damage. I'm not sure we could have avoided that second hit of damage even if we had chosen to attack on the first turn with Zap. So I think we saved as much health as possible during that. But I'm not 100%. Flarp Freak, thanks for the year and a half. Thank you for the prime. Give Flarp Cat a pat for me. And Orange Mango, thanks for three metric years. You're welcome. How did Civ 6 end up? We got uh, 200 turns in. Um, I I feel like I've, I've learned a lot about Civ 6, so I'm actually kind of excited to uh, to go back into that. I'll, uh, I'll give a probably more detailed breakdown when we revisit it. But uh, I, I definitely feel like I, I got a lot of learning in. Do I want an early streamline or an early sweeping beam? I think both are actually pretty okay as an early attack here. Again, I do uh, do apologize and remind everyone that the, the body is likely to be down all of today's stream due to uh, server server end issues. Did we declare any wars? We did not. However, I, I think... Finding a way into a war might be one of the ways forward for Canada. Take Now there's a quote to take out of context. I'm going to go streamline. Although it's a bit awkward to do um, streamline glacier together initially. Definitely happy to get some money here from the event. That makes this shop all the more powerful. We are not in any position to take on the Burning Elite. I think that'd be pretty suicidal at this point. So let's continue happily along our yellow path. Yeah, and here was the, the dilemma that I feared. Glacier streamline on the same turn. In this case, the Cultist Fight is very much a damage race, so we're absolutely going to play streamline over Glacier. But I think I can get away with double defending here. We draw a zap dual cast, we have a kill. We do. Beautiful. No help, no damage taken during that fight. Tempest, cool headed claw. Two orb cards. And claw. 
Don't much like Claw when I've already got Streamline. Streamline is the card I want to play over and over again, not Claw. Cool edit is nice for drawing back into Streamline and making more Frost. Tempest could be okay for brute forcing some Lightning Orbs, although I tend to find it rather weak in the early game before you have good energy generation. Recommend some workshop mods for Sid6. Uh, you can shoot me a message on Discord to to, uh, to recommend stuff like that if you've got links and such. Like it would be the best way. Would love to take a look at a, a few of things like that. Cool headed now, Blizzard later. I like where your head's at, uh, Flitlock. Very curious as to what this event's going to be. Pay for a heal or pay for a card remove from Cleric. Well, well, Cleric. Gotta say, that's a nice cheap heal. Definitely makes it more reasonable to... to buy better things at the shop. This shouldn't change the threshold, right? Uncommon is gonna be 289 at most. We go down to 280. So we can afford some uncommon relics, but I'm, I'm not likely to spend all my money on an uncommon anyway, unless it was Toxic Egg, perhaps. And even that is really not that good to spend all your cash on early. Although I think we could get away with it here. Uh, but if I pay for a card remove, very tempting. Getting rid of all your strikes is something I love doing on Defect, and it makes the streamline all the better. Is this the run for Defect Strike Mastery? I really doubt it. Depends on what's in the store, ultimately. I think we're also relatively likely to do okay in these upcoming elite fights without taking too much damage, which means the heal might be unnecessary. Yeah, being able to, to double card remove here and at the shop is very valuable. We might even be able to get a relic alongside doing that. What would make a run suitable for Strike Mastery early Strike Dummy? Um, spending our removes on other cards could also work. Like we could remove Defense instead, which could be could be more detrimental. If we uh, have really good other block, we could get curses that we end up removing and just have two strikes at the end. Or we could just have a 50-ish card deck, of which some are starting cards. Ectoplasm is one of the most likely out... Uh, situations for a, a strike mastery on defect, I think. We can no longer afford card removals. Man, it sure is tempting to get a strike remove, especially a remove that doesn't improve the... increase the cost of future removes. It is extra juicy so early on. Alright, I'll pay for your card remove. I think Streamline says that's a good idea. So our money went up and then down. We're back, kind of back to a normal amount, considering the starting bonus that we took. And I am going to upgrade our biggest, best damage card for now, the Streamline. As this is going to be essential to winning basically any fight once we remove our starting damage cards. Wow. Blizzard defrag, anybody? Holy heck. It's even on sale. Like, the game wants this to be a Blizzard run so bad. I think Toolbox is also very fantastic. Turbo is even not bad. Plute24 says, Any advice for slowing down while playing? I have a tendency to rush through things and then realize I made the wrong decision and then die. This might be deeply uncomfortable to you to suggest, but genuinely, one of the easiest ways to force yourself to slow down is... Disable fast mode and and just watch the the kind of once you're used to it, it they'll feel painfully slow. The animations for drawing and, and seeing your cards at the start of turn and the animations for everything. But it, it really does allow your your brain a little bit of time to, to think and process what you're actually looking at before you choose to do anything. But it will force you to play slower. Uh, the other recommendation 
that I can give is you can kind of set yourself a rule at the start of each turn, take your hands off the mouse and keyboard and just kind of look at the turn for even just five seconds before you allow yourself to, to make any inputs. And that can be a way to, to slow your play down as well. Enrique K says, I like using the long press confirmations from a quality of life mod to force you to slow down. That way you can't get end turn uh, instinctively. Although that won't save you from, from clicking on cards you really ought not to. Xerxes TV says, sometimes I think of it like a chess puzzle. Look at the entire turn of plays before making the first move in a tactic. Dolan says, I find I simply just don't know what the best choice is, even when I take my time to assess the situation. That's where sometimes trial and error simply has to come in. Sometimes you really do have to, to just kind of guess at what to do. And I do that all the time on stream. I'll like, I'll, I'll, I'll weigh my options at a boss relic choice, for example. Like, here's the upside and downside of this. Here's the upside and downside of the other thing. And here are the in factors that are run that influence those. But ultimately, I don't actually know which one's the better choice. I'm just kind of guessing at it. <laughs> so with 240 gold, we can get uh, quite a lot here. Early defrag is quite spectacular, especially when you already have frost orbs. Especially when you can get an upgrade on it. And especially, especially when we're going to then fight the Guardian. Seems almost idyllic here. Blizzard's going to want an upgrade if we want to use it for any real damage, which at the moment it's actually not that good. Honestly, as an attack card, currently the Barrage is better than the, the better than the Blizzard. Sad as it is to say, the Barrage does higher damage to one target and scales up a lot faster. But doesn't have the long-term potential the Blizzard does, which can be an actually really effective heart solution. I do think Toolbox is a spectacular relic. Probably the best choice here by far. Better than even than uh, defrag, but uh, buying toolbox doesn't get me card masteries. Blizzard, Blizzard will do it, and I do want another striker move. How'd you know? So we don't have enough money left for a potion. We might have wanted to consider perhaps the explosive potion to give us a bit of an edge in this upcoming elite fight, but I think we'll be okay. If this is anything other than Gremlin Knob, we will easily stop the Elite. And if it is Gremlin Knob, we'll still do pretty okay, as long as uh, we can redraw the streamline. I think we'll be okay. Skill Potion might make a difference as well. It is Gremlin Knob. At least we got Zap turn one. Do I Skill Potion now? That is my question. That'll create a skill that we might have to draw again. But the idea behind a skill potion now would be to create a damaging skill that we can use. Uh, ideally a dark orb. From darkness or rainbow. But we could also get multiple lightning orbs from tempest. We could get... I guess multicast wouldn't be very good. Hmm. Recursion would be acceptable. We definitely hit for a little bit more here. Yes, this will likely be a four-turn Goblin Knob fight. Might force us to rest here uh, after this, depending on how painful this is. We draw Defrag Glacier next turn. We should be okay. Charge Battery could help a lot. Hologram could let me double zap. Yeah, I think there's enough hits off the Skill Potion. Let's use it. Seek would be really good. White noise. Let's take a white noise. Give me a random power. Otherwise, we're doing a reprogram, which seems kind of counterintuitive here. What do you got, white noise? We hit a buffer. That's pretty good. I will take a free buffer against Gremlin Knob. Uh, now would be a great time to draw a Glacier next turn. We'll see how this goes. We might have to use our buffer to simply block the first hit. Yeah. This turn is Streamline Defrag. Next turn we play Glacier. 
There's no way we don't play Streamline. So we only saved 8 health from this buffer, but that's still 8 health. Which is important. Now we've got a bit more of a dangerous situation headed our way here. We still have 49 health on this Gremlin Ob. We're being attacked again next turn. We're likely to draw about 26 damage. I think we're playing Glacier this turn. It'll block for quite a bit. 7 plus 3 plus 3. Meanwhile, it only adds 4 damage to Gremlin Ob, so we save quite a bit of health here. And the Frost Orbs are still there next turn if we should fail to kill. We'll deal 9 damage immediately from Lightning by evoking 1, bringing Gremlin Ob to 40. We can then either dual cast or strike and let the Lightning do the damage. Um, we'll bring them down to 30, which would next turn mean we kill with Streamline Strike. But not Streamline Blizzard. Streamline Blizzard Zap would do it. Hmm. If we dual cast... We'll deal another 18, bringing Gremlin Ob to 22. Still requires a Streamline draw. I don't think that's enough of a difference to make up for the fact that dual cast makes us take 5 more damage. So I think what I do is Glacier and Strike. We survive next turn even if we fail to get the kill, but getting the kill is reasonably likely. Something like a 50-50 here. We got it. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Get him, Blizzard. We score a Focus Potion, which is excellent here. I think we saved enough health such that I don't need to rest at the rest site. Uh, and the Stone Calendar is quite sweet for a deck that is quite block heavy. Speaking of block heavy, do we add a hologram or a reinforced body? Both of these are stellar defensive options. I think Streamline says add a hologram here so that we can get it back and play it again. It's a block card and an offense card. Love me, hologram. Arguably the, one of the best card manipulation cards in the whole heckin' game. It's like a seek, but for your discard pile. Yeah, that went way better than expected. Life's going pretty well so far at the start of this defect run. Little YOLO can go a long way sometimes. Let's see what our second relic is. A bottled lightning. You're a little early, bottled lightning. Unfortunately, there is no seek here for you. But we could bottle glacier. And that sounds pretty sweet, actually. Cool-headed, also an acceptable bottle. Have you ever done Scrape plus Reflex? Tactician. I believe that interaction does work. Let's bottle Glacier. And let's upgrade Defragment. Voidheart says, what monitor model am I using? Let's see. I can find the exact name. I actually haven't been asked that one before. Actually surprisingly hard to find. Hold on. These are 27-inch uh, LG monitors. I think I'd have to go like digging through my Amazon history to figure out what exactly their model variety. I got these uh, a couple years ago now.
So, against the three sentries, pretty much all we need to do is play Defragment. Get some Frost Orbs down, and then wait patiently for Stone Calendar to do the rest. My monitors are not curved, uh, Lloyd Hart. They might have looked curved from one camera angle, but they are not. Wet Lotus, thanks for seven months of support. Let's see, strike, strike, then cool headed? I think so. Or is no 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 dual cast. Yeah. That's how it's done. Truly an effortless fight. Now, Stone Calendar can have the credit. Today is not Blizzard's day. Boop. Singing Bowl! Excellent early find. We can skip cards to gain max HP. However, I don't think we should skip a card here. There's actually, all, all of these are interesting options. Early Algo is certainly tempting. Hey there, Threat Level Midnight, thanks for five months. Good luck to the leaves. And we'll, You're so heckin' welcome, uh, White Lotus, for seven months, and the stream vibes. It's good to have you as part of our community. So, genuinely, I think Recursion is also really good here. We already have Focus to make Channeling and Orb a bit more powerful. And Recursion can be used to cycle Frost Orbs at notably zero cost once upgraded. If we're thinking about recursion here, this is a recursion that needs an upgrade for the long term, but I think it will absolutely pay off if upgraded. We don't exactly have all the upgrades I'd like to give. Currently, we would like to upgrade Hologram, Blizzard, and Recursion if I take it. We only have one upgrade, unless these events are generous. But I'm okay with some later upgrading on some of these. Notably, the hologram can wait. I'm going to grab this recursion. And we're going to go for events here. Merchant, what are you doing here? Fusion is being offered. Interesting with a recursion having been just taken. Melter does not decent damage. Potions are okay. If I feel the need for... Uh, Gremlinov Insurance here, although I think the Focus Potion is already Gremlinov Insurance, especially with Bottled Glacier. So I'm not too worried there. I think that means I don't spend any of our money. Oh, maybe Impatience is an option. Although that too needs an upgrade. It's not guaranteed, Lagavulin? No, have you... You can fight the same Elite twice in one act. Uh, the only... Restriction is that you cannot fight the same elite twice in in a row. So we fought Grumlinob first, and then our second elite was 50-50 to be either Legavulin or the Three Sentries. We fought the Three Sentries. That means the next elite is 50-50 to either be Grumlinob again or Legavulin. We could just go back and forth fighting Grumlinob Sentries, Grumlinob Sentries over and over again, and never encounter the Legavulin. Tis the RNG of the Spire. Does the Dead Adventurer event count towards that elite? No, which means with the Dead Adventurer event, you can end up in the same elite fight twice in a row, even two floors in a row sometimes. We've seen that on stream. Free relic. It's a centennial puzzle. Holy heck, that's a very good relic. First time we t lose health each combat, draw three. I'd, I'd say one of the best for the defect. 
All right, wasn't guaranteed Lagavulin, but we did fight Lagavulin, so cool. Let's chill and patiently wait here. Stone Calendar can do a lot in this fight as the egg will sleep for up to three turns, undisturbed. We cool headed here, it'll wake up the egg. Maybe I wanted to cool headed and then play Deep Egg. I think that was the play. Yeah, so I think cool headed then defragment was the play here. Um, but that's fine. I can either wait one more turn or we can just wake up now. But yeah, I, I think it was it was actually cool headed first there. Let's just wait a turn. Keep the lightning orb. Having a lightning orb is not such a bad thing, ultimately. Although I do want to keep two frost here. Let's just go dual cast zap. And I'll recur a frost orb for glacier here, or for a blizzard here. And then again here. That's a full block, actually. Zap does effectively 10 damage, blizzard does 8 damage. Let's play zap. Keep cycling the frost orbs back to the front here. Streamline once again, kind of awkward to play, but it really doesn't matter because the stone calendar is our win con in this one. So let's just keep recursioning frost. Get him, Stone Calendar. Easy breezy. We pick up an anchor for 10 block, turn one. Stacking with the Glacier on turn one, that's a lot of turn one block. It's going to be very difficult to lose health unexpectedly here. Um, and then I think Buffer is going to make it even more difficult to lose health by allowing us to prevent the next time that we would lose health. Compiled River is also not terrible here, although we often just have three Frost Orbs. Cry of the Wind, thanks for seven months of support. And the plebiscite, greetings. Life's good. But when are we going to master auto shields? I can't really recommend auto shields with either hologram or boat thingies. But buffer. Yeah, poor Centennial Puzzle. Will it ever be used? Would this deck love a frozen core? I actually don't think so. I think we would much prefer other kinds of boss relic. Believe it or not, I am going to upgrade recursion before I upgrade anything else here. I really want this recursion to be free. How does card mastery work? Asks DJ Funky Muffins. Essentially, in order to master a card, I have to beat the game with two of that card in the deck. So beating in meaning win on Ascension 20 versus the Corrupt Heart in Act 4. We need two of that card in our deck, and then we need to win. And that masters the card. And the goal is across as many runs as it takes, master every single card in the game. All the starters, all the class cards, all the curses, all the colorless cards, everything. Everything that it could be possible to win with two of. I have to do it. Does that sound insane? Absolutely, because it is. Is it a fun time? Definitely. Absolutely. So we could simply buffer this uh, turn two nonsense. That sounds kind of reasonable. Yeah. I don't need your nonsense, Guardian. Oh no, 36. Only I had some form of protection when I failed to do this kind of damage. Um, no. We're going to take one damage here, which is probably a good thing, as we'll draw a whole bunch of cards for this turn. 
put a lightning orb in play for some passive damage. Both Streamline and Hologram will ultimately be free here. Or, uh, both Streamline and Recursion will be free in the discard pile, excuse me. I think we'd rather Recursion. By Cool Headed, I might draw a Glacier and be unable to play it. I don't really love that. Let's see, we've currently got 11 block. 16 incoming. I can simply go Streamline, Defend, Defend, and skip the Hologram for now. Let's do that. Take actually no damage from that. And yes, the Glacier was the top card. Now the Streamline's free and we can just play it whenever we see it. This too is a good thing. Stone Calendar sends its regards. Take damage to play the stream to play the streamline here. I don't think I need to. It's now uh, Blizzard is actually kind of strong now. Blizzard is also a streamline. Get box. So we'll do it that way. Slightly wrong order. Matters little. Yeah, unfortunately, Stone Calendar doesn't go off again on turn 14. You wish it did. We could bop the Guardian that way. GG! We took only one point of damage during that fight. Centennial Puzzle sends its regards. Didn't use either of our potions, which means we can keep this colorless potion on the ground, as I think both of these potions are a little bit more consistently better. And look at this, three unmastered rare cards, with Fission being quite juicy. Why is Fission so juicy here? Well, with Bottled Glacier, we can always guarantee there are three orbs in play. That means this is always draw three, gain three energy. Electrodynamics can do damage to all enemies, but honestly, so too can Blizzard. And Creative AI could make more powers, which is definitely strong, but I don't think what we want here. Fission puts us further into upgrade debt. Ideally, you want to upgrade Fission such that it evokes the orbs, giving you immediate numerical benefit in addition to the card draw and energy. Uh, but I think we might want to consider something else upgrade-wise. First, we're hoping we can get several upgrades this act. I would definitely be happy with almost no elites taken and lots of upgrades here in Act 2. Let's see what the act gives us. I'd also be happy with uh, not necessarily more energy, but maybe more card removals. Empty Cage or Astrolabe would be pretty tempting. Well, there's the Empty Cage. The energy relic that is up against is Sozu. Sozu's actually pretty okay here as, a, as an energy option, believe it or not. The reason for that being is that we have pretty decent potions. Focus Potion is a, a pretty solid Act 4 potion, good against the hearts. And Block Potion is just solid and reliable, good for preserving buffer as well against heart. Normally my problem with Sozu is that you take a lot of damage on turn 1 if your hands are bad, and potions are one of your best ways to mitigate bad turn ones. Well, guess what? This deck has Anchor and a guaranteed turn one Glacier, which makes me think that potions are going to be a lot less valuable overall. More energy is definitely very helpful in a deck that wants to be playing Glacier Streamline and a deck that wants to be getting as many Frost Orbs in play as possible for Blizzard. So actually, the more that I think about it, the more this Sozu looks really appealing.
I think we're definitely going to get uh, Thunderstrike done before regular strike, uh, Mr. Baconudo. And if that's not appropriate, I don't know what is. The smaller the deck, the bigger the bang. That's right. The, the quicker we can redraw the Frost Orbs, the more powerful the Blizzard will be. So there's a, definitely a balance to be struck between energy and removals. I think I'm going to take the Sozu here. This is a, a less usual pick for me, but I actually I see a lot of potential in this one. Champ is already dead. We don't even need to think about Champ, and we get offered exactly the sort of path I was looking for, actually. One with a buttload of upgrades. Maybe not so many elites. We can just do something basic here. Simple. Deadly. Effective. We don't get that much stronger, necessarily, this act, but I can easily see us cruising through to Act 3 with things as they are. Uh, and another boss relic will really change things for us. Add a pyramid, add... Astrolabe. I don't know. We can we can get a lot done. Fire Flame Fire. Thanks for 35 months. So close to three years. Pour one out preemptively for Champ. He's going to have a cold day coming up. So the goal here is mostly don't lose too much health. Don't fight more elites than we can handle. One is One is plenty here. And for that elite, we'd like to upgrade Fission and, quite frankly, Blizzard. Maybe hologram. Well, now the thing that counts is that you're here now, Death Draw. How's it going, Roman the Emperor? We have to master strikes on each character separately, which has resulted in the running joke of the defect strikes, which are not mastered and perhaps never will be. I think every other character has mastered the basic cards, including Watcher with both strikes and defense. Took a while for Watcher defense, but it happened. We still have two. There's hope, at least until I get to the shop in a couple of floors. Then there's no longer going to be any hope. And I owe the chat a dad joke for the DMD. Why did the defect pursue a career in being an emergency responder? Because they're always so cool headed. Is Miaoi, thanks for three months of support. Hello to Japan. Hope all is well. All right, Fission, show us what you got. More cards, please. Not enough cards to actually knock a bird out of the air. Currently, we're taking one damage, which is perhaps the best amount of damage one could possibly take. Let's keep that up. Just hit me. Fortunately, it takes four hits, not three, to knock a bird out of the air on Ascension 20. Uh-oh. That's not good. When you see all the birds doing that, that's not good. Uh, we could hologram streamline here and try to get one of them down. I'm also thinking about hologramming uh, Glacier and setting up Frost for next turn. I think that's what I want to do. Because I'm not actually going to kill them. Even with the uh, streamline. They're angry. Oh boy, are they angry. But how much can we block? That's the question. 29, 39. Convenient. 
That was the correct amount of block. Uh, and we can even sneak in Buffer here or play Zap, but I think the Blizzard will kill this one next turn, so let's get Blizz uh, Buffer down. Protect me in case of nonsense. Continuing trend of actually only taking one damage in fights, I kind of like it. The Blip Blap. Works surprisingly well. Even Stone Calendar's in on the fun. Ooh. Capacitor. More orb slots. This is definitely a deck that would appreciate more orb slots for the Frost. Death Raw says, are Streamline and Rampage similar cards in my mind? No. No, they're not. The, the way that Streamline scales allows you to play it many times in one turn. You really can't do that with Rampage because of the energy cost. I'm going to grab that. Don't get a lot of opportunities for orb slots as defect. Cauldron, huh? Metamorphosis is kind of interesting. It's not really what this deck is looking to do, but it's an option. I think we're probably going to remove another card and pick up another copy of Hologram, another unupgraded Hologram. Instead of upgrading the one Hologram that we have, we could just have more Holograms. That, that's almost as good. That's almost as good. Beam Cell is also pretty tempting, actually, because most of our damage is attack damage, and Beam Cell will multiply that damage. But that would be yet another card I want to upgrade. I agree that Discovery had a lot of potential in this deck. I think there's a, a lot of usefulness there. A lot of just general power to it. Bites! Bites on Defect allow you to stall for heals. But uh, if you've removed a lot of your strikes already, then it's adding tons of cards to the deck, and including costing you max health. I do think this is a very good event for Sozu in general, just not for this run. Very well. Goodbye. All right, our first actual opponent. Shell Parasite. Normally, this fight is awful because turn one, but I blunk. I blunk real good. Bouncy Robot. Thanks for 15 months. The old bonk. And blonk. Twenty passive block, anyone? Now we don't want to use fission because I want to keep these orbs. Get him, Blizzard. 24 damage. Zeknar! Welcome, one and all. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome, Zek. Hope your hard fight was successful with the defect. You're watching a run that deliberately picked Sozu over, honestly, some pretty good other options. The Empty Cage and the Calling Bell. Uh, we've got Blizzard happening. And... Also Stone Calendar. So, it's kind of cool. Black Lava the Cat, thanks for three months of support. Rest in pieces, Strike Mastery. And rest in pieces, Avocado. 
If only I could pick that up. Okay. Easy every time. Blizzard with a plus gets added to the deck. The second copy of Blizzard. Blizzard deck is now go, Twitch chat. That's the luck of the raid. Thank you, Zeknar, for the Blizzard Plus. The beauty of it all. Love it. Alright, do I actually want an event here, or should I take the combat? Combat seemed pretty good. Momentum says, with like five upgrades, this deck could beat the heart. Well, guess what? One, two, three. Four. It's gonna happen. Born into the cold. So, looking at com card rewards from combats is pretty valuable, actually. Um... And we have Singing Bowl? Actually, yeah, I'm going to take a fight here. Yeah, two max health at worst. And a little bit of money. We can't get a potion, but that's fine. Mojira, thanks for nine months. Sub, baby. Baby. Alright, Chosen could definitely be a challenging opponent. I want a hologram glacier here. Alright, that was a fun turn one. I made 38 block. Here we go. Let's go buffer defend. I'll just patiently wait. Nine times two is eighteen. We're getting twelve. This would not block four enough. So let's go. Blizzard streamline strike. We should probably hit the bird here. Kill this thing first. Yeah, this is not ideal. Centennial Puzzle saved me. Good work. And then all was well. Once again. Let's see. 20 block, 27 block. Okay, we'll have to dual cast also. I guess Bird is dying to either Stone Calendar or Blizzard, so let's hit the Chosen now. I'll take the 50 50 to kill this thing. To prevent the one damage. Since Stone Calendar does exactly the required damage anyway. Good work, Stone Calendar. Okay, that seemed like a pretty spooky fight, but we really only took a couple points of damage there. And we get offered a reasonable card reward. Turbo is a little tempting. But I think we would just prefer Max Elf here. LB Kaiser, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Heck yeah. Is a stone calendar good? It, it can be. Wouldn't say it's an all-purpose relic. Wow, it's done so much damage in this run. Nice. I'll take two max health. Alright, let's definitely not tango with elites. We're here to upgrade stuff, and upgrades we have. I no longer view Blizzard as a priority upgrade now that we have an upgraded Blizzard. So I think we can focus on stuff like Hologram, Vision, and Buffer, perhaps? Let's start with Fission, I think. Just like the look of that. Oh, and another upgrade! The Warped Tongues! Yeah, just send me to Upgrade Town. We could take the Curse here, which we haven't mastered, um, and get a random upgrade every turn, which is really good in a deck like this, because we have so few starter cards. But that Pain Curse is a bit of a problem. 
Seems like the lower the per combat deck damage on Kalender, the better your deck is, right? Well, that's definitely one way to look at it. If, if goodness of deck is measured in turns to win fights, for example, which is a reasonable metric. Usually you want that to be lower than seven. Easy remove pain. Not before the champ fight, it's not. We have no shops for the rest of the act, and if we don't take the Burning Elite this act, then we might be forced into no shops next act. Uh, also, if we get an extra upgrade in it right now, we might be able to fight this Burning Elite, which doesn't even cost us a rest site. Um, actually, this would be a really good thing to do. I'm much less afraid of the Elite with uh, two... Two Blizzards. Yeah, it could be a super-powered Book of Stabbing. That would be spooky. That would maybe require my Focus Potion, actually. So, so that's a potential problem, is that the Burning Elite here could require my Potion. If we were to do that, I'm not sure about that. Let's see what the relic is. Peace pipe. I should have taken that tongs. Dang it. <laughs> I guess we could skip this. The removal was easy after all. I'm really not sure about this Burning Elite. I don't think I'm going to. Not not an Act 2. No, it should be an easy Burning Elite Act 3. Let me skip that. Hello again! Honestly, this is fine. Is this capacitor and hologram to save three health, or or what? I think we just save three health. Look the way this is gonna go. Blizzard time. And fission time. Five cards, five energy. No problem. Block for sixty. Easy. Yet another comparatively easy hallway fight. Offering us either a cold snap for more frost orbs, or since these are three unupgraded common attacks, I think two max health. Shunjo, thanks for 34 months. Holy heck. Support is real today. We get yet another upgrade. Which arguably could go on Capacitor. I think Cool-Headed is also really good. How would I value a Frozen Core for this run? Pretty low, ult ultimately. Once the orb slots are full, it would no longer provide any value. With the Capacitor in the deck, it's a little bit better than it was in Act 1, but I think it's still pretty, pretty bad. I think I am going to upgrade the cool headed here for more card draw. How does Glacier upgrade? Just plus three block. Surprisingly basic. 
All right, let's see. This is not the ideal turn one against Gremlin Leader, but I'm actually not too upset about it. Got 28 damage headed our way. We're blocking for 21 currently. I think this is, once again, Capacitor and Hologram. We will get debuffed, which is a bit unfortunate, but we'll also draw a bunch of cards for next turn, which can help us get set up here. What we want to do is start scaling the Blizzard and use the Blizzard to wipe out the minions here. Pick two. It's not enough damage yet. So we'll get attacked again next turn. That's not that bad, actually, because I'm going to draw the Fission, probably. Okay, so let's go Buffer Defend here. Let's see what we can do next turn. No Cool Headed Before Fission is a little sad, but only a little. I'd like to be able to draw back into Streamline. Kill you. And indeed we did. And I can hologram it again. Perfect. Kill you also. Also hologram cool-headed here. I don't think I want to do that. Well, Streamline doing a really good job of showcasing why it's here. And we can actually just full block also. Great turn. Keep the buffers. Easy. Easy peasy. How long have I been playing this game? Asks uh, Summoner TG. Almost 7,000 hours of uh, Slay the Spire is my Spire career at this point. A ton. A ton of playing one video game, more than I've ever put into any other game in my life, certainly. But since it's now become my primary income source as well, it just kind of seems reasonable. Blap. You're going to summon new minions to get blapped? No, you're going to attack me. Which makes me very glad I preserved the buffers from last time, because ouch. I don't think I can block 16 by 3. Uh, 14, 26. This will not be enough. So let's just attack. Buffer saves the day. And so does Stone Calendar. Stone Calendar gets a small friend. The Mercury Hourglass adds three damage per turn. As we count towards the Stone Calendar's inevitable explosion. Two upgraded cards appear. Reinforced Body is a premium block card, and one I really like. Uh, or Reprogram here to let us trade Focus for Strength and Dex. We don't want to do that. Give me a Reinforced Body, please. And I think I will take one late Act 2 event. See what we get here. A Pleading Vagrant will sell us a Relic for 85 gold. Or trade it for the Shame Curse. I'll take a Relic. What do you got, friend? A Blue Candle! We can now play unplayable curse cards, notably including our Ascender's Bane, to deal one damage to ourselves, and at times draw three additional cards with the Centennial Puzzle. Which may or may not be useful. Sometimes we'll choose to do that, sometimes we won't. Hello and welcome, Maddie. A20H means we're fighting the heart. That's the H on Ascension 20, Slay the Spire's highest difficulty level. It's a good time. By which I mean it's a very difficult time. New players are always heckin' welcome here in the chat. Got a very question-friendly community. Part of, I, I guess, the teaching background. Uh, part of teaching for me was it always, uh, you know, getting asked the same questions essentially over and over again. And I know some some communities kind of sneer and deride at that, but if you never allow repeated thoughts, you kind of box yourself into a corner pretty quick, I find. So it's always a delight for me to see to be to meet 
to see people who are relatively new to the game and looking to learn the experience or just new to the channel at large because it means that people are finding their way here and that the community is still growing. It's good stuff. And yeah, that, that also teach, pa teaches patience too. Patience with people, patience with the experience. I've built up a lot of patience in my life, and there's quite a few things I credit to that. Uh, one of which, actually, here, Dark Souls. The art in the corner here. Dark Souls taught me patience quite well. But have I done the Hot Wings A20 challenge? Not yet. How's it going, Scar? On Ascension 2, working their way up? Good. Best of luck on the climb. All right, well, Buffer's here. I'm just going to play the attack cards. Adding days to my draw pile is not really my jam, you know? Not my jam. Mr. Balagina, thank you so much for the five very generous gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Some new cozy friends. Excellent. Just what I like to see. Stone calendar. Do your thing. Liquid memory. Oh. Force field can be a really good block card. I'd also say in a deck like this, static discharge can be really powerful. Uh, a deck with lots of frost. Uh, as a way to... Retaliate with damage if an enemy overwhelms your ability to scale defensively. That said, with two blizzards in the deck, I think we actually have our long-term damage plan sorted out really well. And the goal should be to buy and large just channel more frost. ASAP. Buffer makes it a lot less valuable also. Liquid what? Do this next. So many delightful upgrades. We really improved the, the upgrade debt situation from last acts. We picked up a couple of already upgraded cards, we removed a couple of cards, and we upgraded so many things thanks to that bonus event. So now we have Fission Plus, Capacitor Plus, one Hologram Plus, one Buffer Plus, and uh, poor Champ is going to find out the hard way what it means to be outscaled. Poor guy. Okay, just gonna go in faster here. Uh, actually, we'll lose buffer here, huh? That's fine. Make this cheaper. Even if I spent all my energy on Reinforced, we couldn't have stopped that hit. Which is just fine by me. Oops, that wasn't quite enough, huh? Let's count that. Thought that was 21. Alright, we lose the other buffer, but again, this is not going to be an issue. In a moment here. As we go up to six frost orbs and stay there. This is where I kind of wish we had a recycle in this deck. But mostly our goal is to channel so many frost that the blizzard does indescribable amounts of damage. More damage than you can shake a stick at. And we're actually not even going to bother chipping away at champ's health that much. Beside that, I just want to make the blizzard become large. I'll play this one. Getting close to half here, with the aid of stone calendar. Champ fight is a fight done in essentially two phases. When champ is above half HP, he doesn't consider you much of a threat and will kind of putz around a lot. When champ goes below half health, he gets very angry and will kill even the most defensive of decks very quickly. Uh, unless you can overwhelm him and bring him to zero health, which is usually the plan. So the core idea for any champ fight is spend 
the time while Champ is above half health, preparing your deck situation, setting up a nice amount of damage, or otherwise putting yourself in a position to outright win the fight with your powers or exhausted cards or what have you. And then using burst damage, kill the champ before he can truly harm you. Almost. We are almost ready. Ninety nine damage. Champ is becoming very strong. Good for him. Perfect draw. Okay. It's time for a bink and a bonk. We go Blizzard. Hologram. Blizzard again. Not all cool headed. And once more with feeling blizzard. Crunchy. Normally I'd love Seek here, but if we want to master the fishing card, this is a great opportunity to do so. Move all your orbs, gain energy, and draw a card for each orb removed. Let's do it. The challenge of the mastery. Challenge is that we have to make card picks we wouldn't usually make. I like it. I like it a lot. Getting duplicate rare cards is also very difficult to do, generally speaking, so we definitely want to take the opportunity here to grab the second fission. They kept asking me, how good is the Frozen Core? And... What I would have, what I kept saying was that no, it's not that good because once our orb slots are full, we no longer have a way to get our orb slots to be empty again, such that we're not getting frost orbs anymore. Except we totally do now have a way to get our orb slots empty again. With two fissions, emptying the orb slots is easier than ever. Frozen core replaces our cracked core. If we end our turn with an empty orb slot, we get a free frost. Really not that much in terms of uh, scaling the blizzard. It, it's not as as helpful as you'd want it to be. Just one frost orb per turn. But one frost orb per turn is pretty good, especially when we're also adding defense to the mix. That means we'll have three frost orbs at the end of turn one, accounting for the glacier that we still have bottled. And we have a capacitor to get more orb slots, which also makes this easier to take advantage of. I like it. The Philo Stone and the Busted Crown are also both fine. More energy is certainly helpful here. But I, I genuinely think this is a very cool, pun intended, Frozen Core. Let's, let's do it. Let's upgrade that Starter Relic and get more Frost for a true Blizzard run. How appropriate. Yeah, no, no shop for us. Pretty... Pretty underwhelming Act 3. We only get to fight one elite. This is the consequence of not being brave enough to fight uh, a burning Gremlin leader, which I'm actually pretty okay we did that we didn't do. Means we'll be short on relics, short on overall opportunities this act, but at least we get to look at a bunch of card rewards from regular fights and get some max health, perhaps. It's not a very good path, but I think it'll still do. I think we can still pull it up pull a winning run together out of this.
Beautiful. Note that the Frost Orb generated by Frozen Core immediately gives you block at the end of the turn. Two buffers. Love it. Charge battery with a plus is not bad. Heat sinks can also be fun card draw in any deck with enough powers, and we do have enough powers that heat sinks could be quite good. I think the heat sinks will want an upgrade if we look to use it for uh, card draw. I think more card draw is good. Oh, I saw that you asked this earlier, Deathraw. I apologize for missing that uh, last time. Deathraw asks, in general, do I prefer my orbs to perform one role, offense slash defense, and the cards prefer the to perform the other? Yes. I think it is very difficult to get your orb slots to, to be both the block and the defense of your run. In order to make that work, um, you either need to take really a good advantage of stuff like loop, where you can radically change the output of the deck on the fly, depending on what the enemy is doing. Or you need to just spam so many orbs that you can numerically overwhelm everything, which is kind of inefficient to do. Uh, I do generally prefer that either my orb slots are dedicated to dealing damage, lightning or dark, and then a bunch of block cards, like charge batteries, reinforced bodies, holograms. Um, or I want my orbs blocking, the frost in this case, uh, with my cards then dedicated to finding a way to deal damage. The blizzards, the streamline, and the support cards kind of helping those. Max orb slots in total is 10. Cannot go beyond 10, no matter what. Frosty. way. Easy. This be one of the situations where playing the Ascender's Bane might be worthwhile. We're just going to do, let's see, is this 24? We could just do Heat Sink Streamline Defend. Get him. Bonk. Deeply, deeply satisfying. How about a second copy of Glacier? Does that sound appealing to anybody? In a double blizzard deck? I think so. Let's get icy. Another good use case for the Ascender's Bane here. We're not really drawing a whole lot of value. Let's pay the price of one health to draw more here. Pretty happy with that. Do buffer. This, this could be damaging to our health in a couple of ways, really. turn. Just like that, the Frost Orbs are effortlessly refilled. Good reason to upgrade Dual Cast now, also. 
That can then help us generate more frost orbs. Not actually paying much attention to this fight. Do this, the blizzard animation get bigger as you scale? Yes. I think with a cap of 100 frost orbs. But yes. Definitely yes. Um, who's our first Act 3 boss? Against... Hopefully we'll fight Awakened One, and then I can show you maximum blizzard animation. Upgraded loop is a little sad, but still pretty dang good in this deck. Especially with the heat sinks. Yes, I'll take a loop for late game scaling. I'm gonna need some help. Frost, please. Bonk. Beautiful. Upgraded go for the eyes. That's pretty spicy. That allows us to apply Weaken and really slow down some of the most dangerous fights in the game, including the Corrupt Heart. This is very important for stopping Corrupt Heart. Good against Time Eater, too. And very good with two holograms. I'll take it. I wish more attack cards had special animations. I think it'd be really cool if there were a few more. Definitely. Really like that. Just scale the frost orbs, don't question it. All TV, thanks for the five months of support with that Prime sub. I can appreciate it. Let's draw some cards. Be a very strong Blizzard now. Hello. It says deals 66 damage. Actually, no, it says more than that. Nice. Hopefully, buffer stops that damage, but you can see the fight got a little out of control there. Nicely handled. Second Blizzard rebound is here, or Beam Cell. With Go for the Eyes, I actually really like the Beam Cell. Even though it's unupgraded. Could take a third Blizzard unupgraded, but I, I don't have any interest in that. Sorry. We're gonna upgrade Loop. Vision's also pretty tempting. Um, do I have Cinder's Bane here? I don't think I bother. Oh, 
plenty of good stuff to play. Giant Head should be very easy for this deck, actually. Fission unplayed for the moment. Just a few too many starter cards still. Tick tock. Time is running out. So they say. Give me this. One damage from Stone Calendar. I'll take it. Get our super key. Chaos Plus is interesting. If we want more orbs. Although random orbs are not necessarily helpful here. This could generate frost orbs. And is a card we haven't achieved mastery of. Or we could simply take two more health here. I'm a little worried that we don't have enough card draw to make this work. But we do get many more card picks. Chaos another time. Do we want turbo? Or energy generation? Honestly, I'm not feeling it. We skip our Act 2 boss relic? We did not. We have a sneaky boss relic here. The Frozen Core. The replacement starting relic for the defect. Easy to overlook. Because why would anyone take Frozen Core? the world's worst barrage. Just keep taking health here. White Beast Statue. That ain't it, unfortunately. It's, uh... It's not, uh... Not what we skipped the shovel for. take our time versus the writhing mass. This enemy does not scale up over time. One of comparatively few enemies who, uh, who don't do that. Scale, that is. It's pretty good damage, but I'm not going to bother yet. Jack, Egg. Jack asks, what is the maximum amount of damage that Writhing Mass can do? Their highest damage base attack. Here, I can actually show you the, uh, the different intents here. With the Bestiary mod, there are five different actions this enemy can take. 
Every time you change their intent, they shift to a different one at random. The probability is not equal between all the options. The weakest attack is the attack debuff. Base of 12 applies weak and vulnerable, which is going to make the other attacks hit harder. Attack defend for 16 and block 16. This is pretty consistently the lowest, the least threatening attack, but the block can prevent you from further changing the mass's intent, which can be an issue. Multi-attack for 9 by 3 one big hit for 38. Note that if you're vulnerable, the multi-attack becomes 13 by 3 and the single attack becomes 57. And those are the two really threatening numbers the writhing mass can create is 39 and 57 when you're vulnerable. Lastly, the big swirly effect permanently adds a parasite to the player's deck. That's the one a lot of people really dislike the writhing mass over but it is ultimately not that much of a problem as long as you are restrained in your use of attack cards. Don't play more attacks than you can... Uh, ...than you can do while still safely having an option to change their intent afterwards. So, for example, after that blizzard, we can reroll again by doing hologram on the blizzard. But we prefer to, once we find an intent that's not threatening, just leave it as such. Note that if you strike the Writhing Mass without damaging the actual health, then you will not change the intent of the Writhing Mass. So here, for example, I'm going to play this Blizzard for 64 damage. If this had been the Curse, we could play Strike again. If I didn't have the Strike in my hand, playing the Blizzard would have been a bad idea. And now we're almost done the fight. Just give me hologram and we're good. Or blizzard, that works too. We're out of there. Fruit juice, come on. And there's card draw. Skim, draw three cards, thank goodness. I was wondering if we'd ever find card draw. Could actually take more combats, less events, but I think events here at the end of Act 3 are pretty good. Could get a rare relic, could get colorless cards. It's gonna be a rare relic. These two are pretty threatening. Do I have what it takes to fight these enemies? Actually, I don't think that I do. This is one of the most threatening fights in the Spire, and I don't have potions to, uh, to burn here. These enemies scale very quickly, and it's really all about uh, can you kill one of them quickly? We can't, actually. So I think we could end up losing way more health here than acceptable. This fight definitely scales faster than any of the bosses coming up. I'm gonna leave. Maybe that's a sign I should have taken uh, not the event, but maybe we'll get Mind Bloom from the next one. Recalling leaves my options open at the final fire here. Definitely happy with Bottled Glacier in this moment. Definitely happy we have Skim now. Little hollow Glacier. Sell you. Great stuff. I need so many more upgrades. Can't tell if the skim upgrade or the heat sinks upgrade is better for our uh, card draw. I guess it depends on the draw order. Deck feels like it wants more focus? Definitely. It's part of why the focus potion is going to be so important here. We'll have more focus for one fight, but only for one fight. Interesting. You know what? Yeah, I'll take another Blizzard Plus. Let's do it. I think that's actually helpful most of the time. 
sure were some good events we found. All right, well, taking more combats would have been the right pick, but that's fine. We do get one more upgrade here. Unfortunately, there are several things I'd li like to upgrade. Fission, Heat Sinks, Hologram, and Skim are all, and Dual Cast are all very good upgrades, but we can only upgrade two of them. I'm thinking probably Heat Sinks and Hologram, personally. Let's start with Heat Sinks here. Ooh, and we drew it turn one even. Excellent. Take one damage. I'm okay with taking one damage. Hit me. Damage is incoming. Dual cast is a semi-reasonable block option here. Good hologram reinforce body. That's not very good compared to dual casting. It's hoping we draw one of our fissions, but that's not been uh, not been a thing. Playing loop draws too. It's also a reasonable option. Um, but I don't have room in hand, so what I'm going to do is play the Ascender's Bane for space, even though we no longer draw off the puzzle, and then play loop to draw two more. Which at least got me Recursion. I'm cool with that. And then Hologram Recursion is better than dual casting, I believe. Take five. That's not too bad. the chat a dad joke. I think we're definitely going to be playing Vision here. She draws everything. Then we can Glacier, then Fission. Cool with that. Let's go with an oldie but a goodie, considering we're, we're about to play some Fission here. What kind of defect does the... Uh, what kind of car, excuse me, does the defect have? A Ford Fusion. More cards, please. More ice, please. Ford Fission Plus. And yes, Ford Focus, uh, also an acceptable punchline on that one. Gotta love when you can, uh, you can use multiple different words for the punnery. It's good times times. Rostacular. That one's a machine learning, I think. I just have nothing turns sometimes. I don't think those are going to cut it in heart. Like, we can't just draw a Glacier Triple Defense Streamline versus heart and expect that to go very well. A bit concerning. Ow. Hmm. I don't even get to upgrade an Act 4.
Crunchy. Alright, it's Time Eater, not the Awakened One, unfortunately. So I don't think we'll get to see a maximized... Blizzard. That's alright. Seems like a situation I'd rather buffer for. No frail for me. I'm a turnip. We could maybe do it against Spire Shield. That's an option. Tolerate these slime cards. We'll play them as we draw them. Do ultimately have to play cards here to be able to defeat Time Eater. One card next turn, I'm okay with that. Slow and steady wins the race against the time slug here. Loop zap is a winning option. I don't think we actually quite have enough passive block to just E to E, so to speak, the time eater. Don't think we get away with that. Scaling our blizzards ought to be more than sufficient, though. A slow fight, almost glacial in pace. But our victory is inevitable. Slime men. Oof. Okay, we're losing the buffers. We have to put an end to this quickly then. Let's get lightning in play finally. It's a very threatening turn. Doesn't matter, you're dead. 100 damage blizzard. GG. Cool. Made it through the Time Eater fight, no problem there. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these frost orbs? I have no idea if this is going to be sufficient. Let me be really honest here. Get one last upgrade or a rest for six health. I think the upgrade's good. 
Hologram, Skim, and Fission are probably our best candidates. I'm thinking the second hologram upgrade is really important. Skim to get through the initial deck faster is also pretty important. If I had more energy generation, I'd like to skim a bit more. What's missing to an infinite? This deck is nowhere near infinite. All of the pieces to an infinite are missing from this deck for an infinite. So if you if you were to take the whole deck out and then replace it with a different deck that was infinite, we'd have an infinite. Why not just do that? Because we skipped the peace pipe, that's why, sorry. Actually, two madnesses, yes. If, with two holograms, two madnesses. Hmm. Alright, well, at worst, Ori is 10 max HP. At best, it's some really important cards. Could be focused in there, after all. We can remove a card alongside. I don't think the bottled tornado is any good. Not without an echo form. We could bottle defrag, which is not bad. We could bottle loop or buffer, which is not bad, but... I think I'd rather look at new cards. Especially when we can turn those into hit points if they're not good. Creative AI could change everything. Hold on. Barrage Plus is kind of spicy. Cool-headed reboot force field. Another recursion plus. Okay. Oh, I like it, Twitch chat. Give me the recursion plus. And give me the cool-headed. Skip. I think we skip this. It's like maybe a way to kill shield and spear, but I'm not sure it actually is. I'm taking this, because I think we need it. Okay, 130 gold left. What can we do? Probably just card remove. Yeah, I think just card remove. Get the last strike gone. And yes, close call indeed. I think this could go either way. It's really going to depend partially on our shield and spear fight. How well do we do against these two? Bad opening turn. I actually appreciate being hit for the 21 on this turn. I don't like that we drew double hologram initially. Uh, I do like that we're about to take two damage, though. And I do like that we didn't get our focus debuffed. I'm going to zap them, Fission. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Convenient. Draw towards the recursions or get more block this turn. Gonna take a little bit of damage here. Block 12. So we do 29, take 44. Block potion's fine here. Although it might have use in the heart fight for the buffer. By cool headed, we're risking taking five more, but there are three draws that are better off of 12. So it's. Not that bad odds. So it's one in four to get one of them, but we're drawing two cards, though. All right, you know what? I'll do it. No luck. 
So, block pot, yes or nay? I think nay. Let's take the damage and be a little shamed. I don't mind taking a little bit here. Taking a lot would be considerably worse. No way to turn around here. Okay, incoming damage is how much? 762. Uh, that's a nice amount. That's 69 damage. So if I creative AI... Oh, the heatsinks upgrade was so good. Uh, and then block for 27 more. We also get 4 at the turn. So 40 plus 27. That means I'll take 2 damage if I play the creative AI. I think that's worth it. I can turn around now. That's even better. More card draw. Next turn looks iffy, though. But we're going to outscale pretty fast here, is my hope. Oh, yeah. Things are looking up now. Turn this way. Let's see. We used both visions? Looks like we did, huh? We sure did. Spooky. It's a little spooky. Just need to essentially channel as many frost orbs as possible. Which might not be enough. There's the fear currently. But what if I had two echo forms? Would that be enough? this. It's gotta be. Oh, I should've just played it one time. Foolish. Forgot Stone Calendar was coming in there. Alright, that's still fine, though. We can do some hot nonsense here. They're both very dead very soon. There they are. Okay. 45 out of 85 health. We are offered a turbo. I think we want this turbo for the hard fight. We've got some useful potions as well. Now that we have the card draw of the heat sinks and the creative AI, a card like turbo looks pretty good. Vision turn one is kind of interesting. Buffer turn one's even better. And we use the block potion to block the 67, hopefully. I think this will work. You're just hoping, anyway. No frailty as well. It is the multi-hit first, so hopefully we can protect it. Looking pretty good. Let's see, if I hologram Glacier, is that good enough? Three plus five. Focus this for seven. 
you get 12 at the end of the turn. Four from plated armor. 12 from the block potion. Hologram, the glacier, play the block potion, play the defend, keeps the buffer intact for next turn. Can I get heat sinks in play? It's really important that heat sinks is in play. Hologram Fission. Go Heat Sinks Capacitor Fission. That's an interesting option. Trying to draw forward to get our block rather than blocking with what we have. Um, what if I hollow the reinforced body? We would block for five, and then this is 27. Which goes down to 25. So the two, so you passively block 28, 12 at end of turn, four from the thingy. I think I might be able to get heat sinks in play. Let me just double check that. So hologram, reinforce body, play heat sinks, play reinforce body, use block potion. You block for five minus two. Minus two when I play the heat sinks. Plus 18 from reinforce. Minus two from beat of death. End turn with 17 block. Get four from plated armor. 12 from frost orbs. 12 from block potion is exactly 45 block. And we get the heat sinks in play. That's the line. Might as well do block potion first. Thanks, Red Needle. Buffer's obviously getting used here, so we might as well just play Streetline Blizzard. Get a little bit of damage in. Preserve all this health resource. This could be a winning line through the hard fight that we didn't get clapped by this. Very, very important. All right, now it's time to get some powers in play. So hollow fission. I think I'm going to hollow capacitor, actually. Let's start with that. There's creative AI. So I can go defend turbo creative AI. No, I can't. Defend fission creative AI. Mixed feelings there. to play deep rag. This is really going to depend whether this is multi-hit first or not. Is the second buffer that important? It might be. I'm going to go creative. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it was. Vision. You'd love to see it. Okay, I think we're going to use the vision here. Two card draw, three energy. Turbo is here get me more frost ASAP. I'm probably going to go turbo hologram glacier here. Scale up the blizzard more. Get our frost orbs refilled. Let's do that. Does that actually keep the buffer? Maybe I lied about the buffer being important. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Never mind. Don't worry about it. 
All right, we can hologram go for the eyes, which looks pretty important here. I don't see us full blocking this very easily. It's going to be 3 by 15. Storm does draw cards, but I'm a little worried about uh, the fact that it'll replace our frost orbs with things we don't want. Hello, Defrag. Unfortunately, Defrag's in the draw pile, not the Discord pile. It'll also evoke Frost Orbs for Big Block, as long as we have them. We don't automatically get Frost Orbs, though. If we have six Lightning Orbs, we're getting nothing. get skim instead, but I don't really see what that's going to do for me. Got to do some damage here. I'm going to skip this storm for now. We might play it later, though. Good. Okay, here we go. are good cards to shuffle without. Get in there, Stone Calendar. This is where the fun begins, and by the fun, we mean revealing that we outscale Heart here. Heart scales up pretty fast here, it's true, but we scale faster. I do think I play the storm now. Master, master, let's go faster. Skip everything. Ooh. Turn. The turbo, actually. That's where I feel like this is headed. No statuses for me, thanks. Do some more damage here. Cool with Blizzard Hollowed Blizzard. Yeah, we are. Could also try to skim for the upgraded blizzards, but I think that was good enough. Alright, 6x15. This is probably the most difficult attack that we need to survive here. Quite frankly, I don't see what the big deal is. Let's see, this is 42. So currently we'll take a small amount of damage. That's fine. This will result in one wound being added to the discard pile. Gee, Mr. Hart. Well fought.
but we will win even if it takes an Ice Age. GG. What a cool run, Twitch chat. That hard had no chance. GG. A Graham, thanks for seven months. GG. Very cool run to uh, to win with Frozen Core Sozu as our two boss relics. What a way to master the card Blizzard and Fission. Two very difficult, I think, cards to uh, to win with. Now crossed off our list. Excellent work. Excellent, excellent work. Go for the ice. <laughs> Love it, Tom. The heart had absolute zero chance there. The spire sleepeth, and so shall I. Truly a uh, precipitous moment here, winning with Blizzard. Triple Blizzard. Double Fission. I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. Fission hard to win with. Fission just hard to get two copies of and then win with, like any rare card. It's not so much that the, the card is bad in any sense, but just acquiring a two of the same rare is a challenge enough on a Spire run. And Luminescent, thanks for 43 months. Here's to one of the best streaming communities. You're looking right at it. Excellent. Well, Twitch chat, that was an amazing first run. Next up, the Watcher is going to tackle the Spire. But before that happens, I need a break. Going to refill the, le the legs, stretch my water, grab a quick snack here. So back in five to ten minutes. And when I return, the Watcher strides forth and tries to cross some more cards off of her to-do list. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. I am lunched up. I'm ready to go. Creative AI, definitely a late game power. I, I don't know that we would have won this run without the creative AI. Specifically, the interaction between creative AI and heat sinks. Allowing us to get reliable card draw. And scale at the same time. We got some pretty lucky creative AI pulls in the heart fight. Um, defrag... More than one loop, an extra capacitor, it's pretty good. What do I think about Reboot and Reboot Plus? Reboot's a bit awkward. It's kind of like card draw, but the fact that you're reshuffling your discard pile into your draw pile is usually non-desirable. The discard pile is likely to contain status cards, or the draw pile is likely to contain power cards that you want to draw more quickly. So these can both make reboot a bit awkward. The upgrade, however, is very good. Plus two cards drawn is a, a very tremendously powerful upgrade. So if you're going to take reboot, it's well worth upgrading. When it's best is in allowing you to redraw cards that like to be played multiple times. Good with Streamline, good with Claw, good with Blizzard, honestly. Kind of cool with Recycle. And you can even sort of ignore the, the shuffle part and just look at it as a one-time card draw. Play all the cards in your hand, play Reboot, draw a whole bunch more cards, play those. That, that can be good, too. I like it as a bottled card, sort of a calculated gamble, but not quite. Axmalan, thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. All in all, I think reboot is is probably in the C or B tier overall. It, it's useful when it's useful, but not like amazingly useful, and is definitely awkward at times to the point where it's a curse in some draws, or worse than a curse, a card that if you play it can cause you to lose. Greetings, Jews. I do think we're going to be taking more curse darts on uh, Watcher especially. I don't mind a rare colorless card one bit. I don't really like the max health of the boss swap either, so yeah, let's take a curse here. We're looking for an unmastered curse, specifically. If we get a one that we've already mastered, we can just remove it. Like Parasite, for example. And then we take either an unmastered colorless rare card here, secret technique or sadistic nature, or we could take hand of greed and just make mad money. Dollars, dollars, please. I'm going to go with mad money. And we're going to use that money to remove the curse. And we'll figure it out from there. Hopefully I'm going to take a bunch of elites this act also. Currently I'm thinking this. Hand of Weed on Watcher can do some serious bonkitude, that's for sure. Do it that way. Some truly serious bonkitude. Oh, come on. <laughs> Dang it. All right, well, the price of greed already being paid. Ooh, I actually don't mind it just lucky one bit. It fits with the theme, right? It's the money card, but also can allow us to scry away the curse sometimes or just set up useful hands overall. Flying sleeves for retaining damage is also fine. Not even going to acknowledge pressure points here, unfortunately. Get out of here, stinky pressure points. Get in here, double damage. And agreed. 
Kitching. There we go. Now we have enough money for the first shop to be reasonable. Do we want a crush joints for vulnerable or indignation for a second wrath entry that could also be vulnerable? Could have been a secret technique pressure points deck. If only. Are there any unmastered cards left in Watcher? Yes, actually, she has the fewest mastered cards of all the characters. Oddly enough. Ah. Oh ho. Potion Belt is here. Tantrum is here. Meal Ticket is here. Gotta say, not choosing to remove a card here seems a little crazy. Since we're already behind one card. Okay, let's lose the curse. Which means we can buy Tantrum or Tranquility. Or Wheel Kick. Or a Potion. I like the tantrum quite a bit with indignation. Almost well enough to remove this eruption, or at least not upgrade it immediately. Sure. Tranquility is also kind of tempting here. Do you ever care about the max health loss from Parasite? Not, not in this position, I, I don't think. It'll hurt a little bit in the late game, but only a little bit. Doesn't affect us at all right now. Warped tongs and the pain are back. Interesting. An upgrade on a card of our choosing would be very strong here. Maybe upgrading the Hand of Greed for five more base damage. Pain is an unmastered card, though. That said, it'd be quite the gauntlet to survive the pain here. And would put us behind another card remove. I more and more find myself not taking this relic. This could be painful. No pains, no gains. Yeah, it really seems like Clad is going to be the one who can master pain most easily. Let's do it. And if I'm going to careen headlong into an elite fight, I'm going to do it with a third basic fight under my belt, at least. Big money. Alright, that felt like it paid off pretty well. Weave! With a just lucky, actually. Interesting. Weave returns to our hand from the discard pile any time it's scryed, including if you discard it by scrying. It's kind of cool. Let's... Let's add it. Why not? Oh ho Well, hello there. Looks like we kill one of them on turn one. Next turn, no matter what, we have Gambler's Brew. I think we'll be okay. Like this. With 40 damage incoming, defends aren't going to cut it. We need something else. I think this is good enough that we don't have to use the potion. This does 18, 8, plus 12. So Tantrum plus Strike kills this sentry. Which means we can block for 5, take 15 here, win the fight. That's pretty good for Floor 6 Elite. 
We might even be able to hand agree the second one. Or the last one. Not going to be able to get 75 gold in this fight. No way. Probably can only get the 25. Really don't want to lose any more health, so I'm going to give myself the guaranteed kill here. Yeah, that's fine. Gambling chip, an amazing first relic. We can discard any number of cards and draw that many again at the start of each battle. I think this could maybe be a double writhe deck, perhaps. We can find those later. Simmering Fury is another way to get into Wrath. Do I really need a fourth Wrath card? I don't think so. <laughs> Could have had Sadistic Nature Wave of the Hand. Isn't that a fun combo? Is the website up intermittently? I'm not sure if it's going to stay up all day or not. Currently, it seems to be working. I think I'm gonna take any of those cards. I think what we're gonna do is upgrade. Hmm. Probably not eruption, but maybe eruption. Yeah, we should probably upgrade eruption. One sleepy egg. Hmm. Only five damage, huh? I think we just open here and we kill next turn. Like so. Wow, we even get to discard Weave with the Just Lucky. Bummer. If we draw the Hand Agreed outright, we get an instant kill here. Using the Gambler's Brew guarantees it, though. No prob. Scry. Another source of calm is pretty good, too. But I think we want the cut through fate. And I think we're going this way. White Bee Statue is back. Except with this time, we'll actually benefit from it. Get a potion every single combat, without fail. Including this horrible, horrible combat. Yikes. Hmm. Uh, maybe we can go Wrath and just hand agree the red guy? That would be very easy. How much damage is Tantrum, Indignation, Cut Through Fate, Strike? 9 plus 21 plus 18. 48, not quite enough. But if we find just luckier weave, we get there. Hmm. Without the mastery challenge, is the Watcher my highest win rate? Yes, although it's close between Ironclad and Watcher. I guess not so much these days, yeah. Watcher stands out head and shoulders above the rest. That's good. So do we risk it? For the biscuits. 
I'm a known biscuit risker. And I've always got the weak potion if this goes awry. I actually might want to cut through fate before playing indignation here. Is that true? I don't think so. That would let me kill with hand agreed if we see it, but... I think that excludes just lucky as a way to win. Eruption's good enough. Hey. Rude. Can't quite kill. I guess we can use the weak potion here. Take five to get our money. I'll accept that. Now we can take inner peace, or we can take halt. There's also, once again, perseverance being offered here. Perseverance, a pretty iffy uh, block card for Watcher. There's some, some niche uses for it, but I don't see those uses applying here. How are we going to block Guardian? That's my current question. Not so sure about that. Now, we're going to need another way to get into Calm. Halt's, Halt's pretty good in this deck, but we need the Calm entry first. I might need to genuinely upgrade Vigilance for uh, the Guardian fight. For now, upgrading Cutthroat Fate looks pretty good. Upgrading Weave is okay. Let's upgrade the Cutthroat Fate. What? Two more damage and one more Scry. It's pretty dang useful. Binu say thanks for 42 months of support. How's it going? Scream. Does mastered mean included in a winning run? Yes, but uh, for our self-imposed challenge here, we have to have two of the card in order to master it. So included twofold in a winning run does make a mastered card. Was Weave a transform or a speculative pick? We already had one just lucky, and it's a non-mastered uncommon card. These were the reasonings for my taking it. Okay, but where's the wrath at? Good. I'm going to gamble to try to get my hand agreed. Easy every time. Since I'm always getting a potion back, right? And there it is, the second weave. Let's do it. Ornamental fan is incredible here. If we play three attacks in one turn, gain four block. What if I played a million weaves every turn? How much block would that give? Greedy for the money. It pays to be greedy. All right. Suppose one is fine. One uh, hand agreed, that is. Rush down. If we enter Wrath, draw two. Heck yeah, this deck wants a rush down. It's no Wreath of Flame deck, that's for sure. It's pressure points already mastered. Yes, I think that run went on YouTube. You can get a link to the run history there. Actually, it'll be on the archives. So something that you can do if you want to see the, the winning run for any mastered card. 
exclamation point mastered in the name of the card gives you a link to the run on the website, which gives you the date of the run. And from there, you can look at the corresponding stream on the Bela Lord Archives YouTube channel, a full upload of all of our live streams. So check the date of the mastered run, check the archives for that date. There's your live stream. Full unedited content. Miskatonic Blue says, preference for flurry or weave? I have a strong prefer preference for weave and the reasons are twofold. One is that because of rushdown, when you're changing stances, sometimes you're getting cards into your hand for other reasons, or you're overdrawing, uh, reshuffling your discard pile by, by drawing with rushdown. This causes situations where the flurry of blows cannot return to your hand. With weave, instead you get situations where the weave returns for free. Anytime you scry weave away from the draw pile, it's going to return back into your hand immediately. So the weaves are more synergistic with the scry mechanic, I think. Is it possible to master the Necronomic Curse? Yes, and we'll have to do that. Which is a little bit nightmarish. I'm going to use the Power Potion against Guardian, or maybe just the Cultist Potion, actually. Ooh. Twelve cards. Match them. To keep them. No regret for us. Do I want a Crescendo? Not really. Vault, however. Vault is welcome in my deck. Alas, there was no vaults. We have already mastered the Curse of the Bell. We'll have to use the same mechanism to get the Necronomicers mastered. I think with the Rushdown, I, I don't have to upgrade Vigilance here. This fight's a bit weird. Guardian demands some block from us. We don't really do that. That's not our jam, you know? Did I just discard Vigilance? I did. That was not smart. Don't worry about it. Let's do this. Intentionally not breaking through there on the Guardian because I want to be able to turn this into a free turn, essentially. Wonderful. Note that you only take damage one time per attack card you play against the Guardian in the spiky form, not per time the attack hits. So Tantrum hits three times, we only take damage one time. That's not true for the Spikers in Act 3. They have a different buff that acts differently. I'm not sure why they're different, but they are. Uh, this is the turn that's going to hurt. I'm okay with that. Oof. Even worse. they return to your hand if you scry with the weaves that is i don't think the weaves return to your hand if you scry, if you scry with zero uh, cards in the draw pile pretty sure that doesn't work okay i want hand agree though 93 damage ka-ching 
GG. Without the Cultist Potion, I'm actually not sure we win that fight. Uh, we just didn't have enough block to survive Guardian for more than one cycle through their defensive form. Hmm, Establishment Blasphemy in Alpha. Blasphemy slaps kind of hard here. I think overall we don't want any of these, especially since none of them are unmastered anyway. Let's skip. Three stinky cards, be gone. How about more energy, Runic Dome or Coffee Dripper? I am a fan of the Coffee Dripper. We've got our own block engine with the ornamental fan. We've got reliable turn ones with a gambling chip. And we have a constant deluge of potions. That all to me says that we're not going to need to rest this run. Let's just take some so-called free energy. And if we find the opportunity to spend some of our immense cash on a healing relic, then uh, that'd be great. That would truly be great. Speaking of, I think we should hit a relatively early shop here. Which would mean going through this relatively spooky progression. Maybe we go for a second shop, depending on how much money we've made. But ultimately, 600-ish gold by the time we reach this store should be tons. With which to purchase all sorts of things. The question is, can we defeat the Nerdbirds? Let's go ahead and discard these weaves. After all, we can bring them back into our hand with any scry effect. Perfect. And I'm going to employ the power potion here, I suppose. Fasting. Nah, give me... give me study. Alright, nothing fancy here, unfortunately. Can't KO with a hand agreed, so we're just going to go defend Vigilance. Pretty easy for us to knock birds out of the air with the cards we have, so I'm not too concerned by this fight. Should be an easy 75 gold if we do this correctly. For example, this turn looks intimidating at first glance, but because there are two weaves in the discard pile, it's no problem at all. I'll just, uh... Bing! There's also a tantrum. Weave. Weave. Cut through fate. Discard those. Weave here, weave here, tantrum here. Tantrum here. All right. Good talk, everyone. It's time for money. to make enough block while we turn them into money here. I'm actually intentionally wasting damage. We have to cycle back around and use the hand agreed multiple times here. Time to draw. This will be fine, right? We can knock this bird out of the air without killing it. Oof. Okay. Hmm. 
It is easy triple money. Cool. A little bit of diligence there paid off big time. Baron Fell, thanks for 38 months of support. Prostrate is not too bad in a deck like this. Not that good either. I think we're just going to stick to red and blue for stances in this deck. If only Watcher had Hologram. Only there was some card that was able to return a card from your discard pile to your hand. Better yet, make it two cards. Why not? Too strong, man. Easy hand of greed, question mark? Exclamation point. We get an entropic brew and another rushdown. I'll take it. Take the attack cushion. More money? Could it be? I think it could be. I think it all could be. Big cash. Actually, upon review, I can probably only get uh, two of these. With a hand agreed. Let's see. Should decide quick, because I might just kill one right now. Yeah, we should just do that. Okay. Take 50 gold here. This fight's just too aggro for, for three of them to be reasonable. So just kills, huh? Easy money every time. Get a stance potion. Exit calm or wrath at our discretion. Nirvana, whenever we scry, gain block, or quite honestly, just another copy of Just Lucky, because we have two weaves in the deck. Another coin ain't a bad thing at all. Balthamos with the 29 months prime, prime time. This Nirvana is actually not bad either. But I'm going to take the uh, Just Lucky. And we're going to drink the Entropic Brew, reveal an energy potion, discard it, pick up the stance potion. Money. What can 700 gold do for us? Well, it can buy us three pretty absurd relics. Boot thingy, cow thingy, box thingy. I'll take all three, please. Now we get 10 block turn one. We do eight additional damage with our first attack and... We can choose one of three colorless cards to put into our opening hand. In addition to that, we could take Foresight for per turn scry, pretty good with two weaves. And I can remove a card. Because we have so much money that I can just do all of the good things at the shop, and I don't have to make any difficult choices about which ones that I do. Seems good. Let's lose a defend here. Cha-ching. Yeah, 
gambling chip so good though. Just prepping this thing for hand agreed. Let's go inner peace. Then eruption, then eruption. Weave, weave, and then we can get back those weaves three times. Like, holy crap. Let's just get the hand agreed. Good talk. Pro four. Actually, keep both inner peace eruption because we can use them together to draw four. More money. Could take a second tantrum. Could take a flurry of blows. Although I think the flurry is largely worse than the weaves. Upgraded bowling bash slaps kind of hard. But Bowling Bash runs contrary to our mission statement of get all the greed money that we possibly can in every single fight. So, I shall not be doing this. Oh my. I like this opening hand quite a lot, actually. What can I secret tech for? Vigilance? I don't need vigilance. Be nice to be able to use indignation to apply vulnerable here. Although I lose out on a lot of damage if I waste my Akabeko by playing an attack before we're in wrath here. We could use the stance potion, actually. I just enter Wrath with a potion, then I can play Indignation for Vulnerable. That works really well, actually. Yes, let's do it that way. Since we have the White Beast statue, uh, I'll even play Inner Peace first then, because we can just use Secret Technique to get Vigilance if I want to, and if I don't want to, then this will be bonus energy. I think that might be a turn one kill. Depending on what happens here. Didn't get Tantrum, which I think would have been required. So, not a turn one kill, but... Do some other stuff. It's pretty mighty. I think I'm just going to play Foresight Vigilance here, actually. Pretty good damage, as you can see. Quite the draws I was looking to have. Not that big a deal, though. Take six. I'm fine with that. Thanks for the money. Hee <laughs> hee. Get a centennial puzzle. First time we lose health, draw cards. Wheel kick with an upgrade. Slaps pretty hard. Good card draw. I'm going to take that. Still very much lacking in block, but uh, blocking is future Baylor's problem. For now, we're just smacking stuff. To death. Uh, and I think upgrading the other rushdown. Apotheosis. Sure. Excuse you. Glad we got a boat thingy here. Q. 
Okay. Should hit this guy. Uh, although I can just strike him, right? It's fine. No complaints here. You are attacking me, huh? Keep the wheel kick in the cut through fate then. Looks like you're dying. Boop. No money for us today. If I could swap around the starting relics, which character would have the biggest improvement? I think Defect with a uh, bag of preparation from Silent would be spectacular. I also think we just solved our block problem here with Kunai. Kunai plus Ornamental Fan specifically. It means we get both immediate and long-term block for just spamming attacks. Heck, it even makes the Just Luckies block for a ton. That's awesome. I guess I'll take a new Entropic Brew. Sure. Do I grab a Conclude? It's not terrible. I don't think so. This is a pretty easy blue key for me. I don't value tiny chests very much at all. It's got some uses, but not much. The three nerd. Oh, double hand agreed. Let's go. Hell yeah. Two hand, two greed. So I think we do something like... Actually, we don't even need the Vigilance. Might as well, though. Tent from here. And then we go... Bonk. Bonk. Get greedeth upon. Get in there, Kunai. Show them what it's about. Actually, I ironically want to take one point of damage here. I do to make the money. If we want to get hand agreed here, we got to take the damage. It's just the facts. The simple facts of the matter. Easy every time. The boot! If we deal four less unblocked attack damage, make it bigger. Up to five, specifically. I'm hoping, yeah, I am hoping it's Defect Strike. Pippero, uh, Siege Rabbit is our last card mastered. Flex Bot is pretty good. Better than Attack Potion? Let's go with probably. Even more money. Also no stinky hex for me. Take your hex and be gone.
I'm gonna go aggro here. This might be perfect again. Once again, take one on purpose here for the money. Yeah, let's do it. Might be too much damage, though. Uh, yes. This is not... Not gonna cut it. Oh, well. One damage for nothing. How about some more scry? Scry that works with a kunai because it's block also. Empty mind, not bad either. Go, go, Bower Ranger. Thanks for the four months of the prime sub. Actually, a tough call here. Third eye, empty mind. I think third eye, preferentially. But it's kind of close. Let's see. 361 gold does make a shop pretty appealing. Another elite ain't too bad either. But we also get another upgrade going for the shop. Let's go to another shop here. We're rich enough, aren't we? And that even means I can upgrade this third eye for two more scry. Scry's for five cards now. A lot, like a whole hand of draws, basically. Allowing us to effectively preview an entire turn. Hmm, interesting choices here. Let's go panic button. Kill it next turn if it attacks me again. I'm sure it'll be fine. Exactly. Or we can maybe block by scrying for a million. Or some such nonsense. Like with just with the ornamental fan. No. Really can't do that much, can we? Well, actually. Hold on a minute. Dig it, actually. Yeah, this seems fine. Make some cash. Another inner peace. Another way to get into calm. I like it. Frozen Eye is here. Omniscience is here. Panacea is here. Hmm. Interesting options. Meat on the bone can be quite nice with coffee dripper too. Frozen Eye is kind of obscenely strong, allowing us to look at our draw pile in order, which allows us to plan turns meticulously and uh, make deadly use of our scry power. Does Artifact block Blasphemy? No, unfortunately. Omni doesn't do a whole lot. It mostly lets us double the Foresight, I suppose. There's not a whole lot else. Yeah, there's not a whole lot else that uh, it does. 
But that can change, right? Like Omniscience lets us take a whole bunch of cards, Mental Fortress, Nirvana even, and a few others and, and have them be better. I am going to remove another starter card. Let's get rid of a strike. Can I afford Frozen Eye Panacea? Exactly? No. 20 gold left. Even better. Let's do it. Taking this Panacea mostly to serve as a potential mastered card for this run, but it, it can have other use as well. Not at all afraid of Bronze Automaton. I really don't think this fight will be difficult at all if I use the Strength Potion. I guess we can upgrade the Foresight, though. Player Mario says, Frozen Eye seems redundant to me. It might seem that way. Right? Because we have so much Scry, we can already look at the draw pile. But the thing is that with the Frozen Eye, we know the full extent of the draw pile and where every card is. So we can make better use of the Scry that we have. For example, with uh, Just Lucky, we could look at the top card, but with Frozen Eye, we can know what the card under the top card is. So knowing that we can say discard, wheel kick to get closer to Hand of Greed could be something that's relevant. There's, there's a lot of power there. Also, this Panache is gonna go absolutely mental here. Let's see. What does it take to get this Foresight in play? So currently we're gonna draw one, two, three. Discard, we'll kick one, two. All right, that's fine, I guess. Discard this. Just get this in play. And then future turns are going to be spicy, with Panache dealing AoE damage to these minions pretty constantly. So here, for example, I get to know with Cut Through Fate, if I were to discard all three of these cards, I know that I'm drawing just lucky, thanks to Frozen Eye. Without the Frozen Eye, I don't have the access to that information. It's important information. Did that slightly wrong. Crap tantrum adds itself to the draw pile. Whoops. Still fine. Get booted upon. Acceptable. I guess I decided not to use this Strength Potion. Thought I wanted to use it, but then I changed my mind. I also should have discarded the Weave there to get it back for free. Here we go. I'm gonna make a room in hand. Yeah, I knew that was on top too. Where's the other Weave? Oh, right, they stole one. Got it. I was trying to find the other weave, but it's in this entity's hand here. No, thank you. Good. Not even going to bother with indignation here. Let's just... Tantrum Vigilance. Good job, Panache. Okay. 
There we are. You've got hand agreed. How convenient. GG. Thanks for the money. And the dupe bot. And either an omniscience, a brilliance, or a scrawl. With so many zero cost cards in this deck, scrawl looks spectacular for getting stuff in my hand. The Whittle Wolf, he says, I feel like the challenge is choosing between my deck is good at X. This relic card and potion does X versus this is synergistic and improves my deck or I already do this and I don't need it. Yes, to, trying to figure out how, like when to stop taking damage, for example, uh, and start focusing on other things or re recognizing when your deck already blocks for enough. You don't need to invest anymore. These are, these are important things to be able to uh, guesstimate, so to speak. Hmm. Not the world's worst fusion hammer. Coffee Dripper fusion hammer is definitely awkward together. But I don't anticipate needing a whole lot more uh, upgrades this run. We have to recall it one fire also. Phyla Stone makes the heart a lot scarier by adding 15 damage every three turns, which is not so cool. Even with the kunai scaling our defense Im immensely, I would prefer the heart not do massive additional damage early on. Velvet Choker just stops the deck cold, so I think I'm going to take the Fusion Hammer here. This means we get to do nothing at rest sites, effectively, which is kind of sad. Especially since we don't have the green key yet, so we could be forced into some additional rest sites. Thankfully, that's not the case. Overall, actually, I think the act looks really, really good. We get to fight multiple elites. We get to take on the burning elite, and we don't waste time going to rest sites that don't do anything for us. Good. Okay, that's a lot of attacking. Thankfully, we're drawing Scrawl in the opening hand. I guess just give me a good instincts, then. So I'll just make hand space for scrawl, so not a big deal. Draw nine. Don't quite get indignation. Or if I play the defend, we do draw the indignation. Also have cut through fate. Okay, I don't need to play the defend. Good talk. So I think I want to draw all the way down to tantrum? Question mark? Let's just start here. Cut through fate draws a scry's three. If we discard, we get Vigilance. So actually, give me the Eruption. Discard the other cards. When we play Eruption, we'll draw up to four. So we'd have to play the Weaves to make room in hand. I'm cool with that. Telling me I can go inner peace, tantrum, inner peace. According to what I see here. Or even just KO this fool. Get yet more dexterity. Now we can see exactly where hand agreed is.
Discard everything with third eye. An inner piece tantrum draws a bunch. And agreed next turn. Although I'll have to uh, re clear the enemies off the field. Hmm. Awkward. Definitely appreciating our five base energy per turn, if nothing else. Should do it. Like water with a plus. At the end of our turn, if we're in calm, gain seven block. Not too bad. I don't often end turn in calm, but we could make this work for the heart. I think a mental fortress is more likely to be useful. Get four block per stance change. Unfortunately, we cannot upgrade this mental fortress, but it's still quite useful. Notably, Likewater is the card that's not mastered of the two, though. And has the free upgrade. If Likewater feels weak to you, well, you... You might be underestimating it. It's actually quite strong. Um, compared to, say, Metallicize, for example. And Likewater is almost twice the numeric value with the conditional aspect of being in calm. How much health is it worth losing to get off Hand of Greed? I'm usually willing to lose about four or five health for 20 gold, but I mean, it really depends on how much health you have to spare. You don't always have any health to, uh, to trade away, but sometimes, but sometimes. Uh, do it this way, then. Stop the days from being added. Yeah, ultimately it has to be stacking them, Goon the Spoon. There's there's no single block source that'll really cut it in uh, the late game here. So you have to have to combine multiple sources in order to get what you need. Otherwise, it just won't do. Oops. Right, that was not correct. why we don't answer questions and play at the same time. Right, let's try that again. Oh, all should be comparatively well. Um, but is it, though? That defense. Let's 
go. Inner peace. Defend, defend. I'll take three here. That's fine. So three damage for 25 gold is a pretty easy choice for me. Sanctity with a plus. Gain nine block. If we previously played a skill, also draw two. What an excellent card. With the kunai, what an excellent card for this part of the deck in general. Welcome back, uh, Tolfwad's Curse. Since the days of XCOM, you've been aware of the Baylor, but haven't been back in a long time. It's good to have you today either way. Excellent. Most excellent. All right, this event slash enemy is a bit awkward here. Fortunately, this enemy doesn't scale, so slow and steady will suffice here. Just have to make sure we can counter its actions each turn, essentially. That's going to make it somewhat difficult to use the kunai. That's okay. some cards. Okay, that's a intent we can deal with. Why does the bot put weave in brackets? I think that's because we already have two copies of it. Yeah. I think it's telling us that we, we don't need more copies, whereas the other cards that are candidates require us to find a second copy and then win. That would be my guess. Alright, in turns like this we can play a lot of cards. Next turn, I think we can pretty easily kill here. If I do this correctly. Don't change anything else. Easy money. Got an Ambrosia Instant Divinity Stance, which is very, very strong. Another copy of Just Lucky, a card I'm not sure we can have too many copies of in this deck. Bing Bong, how's it going, I Epic Vibes? First you Bing, then you Bong. I like taking an event. We'll have plenty of cash already. Events are quite good in Act 3. For example, the Designer Inspire allows us to upgrade two random cards or remove a card. I think we should keep getting rid of starter cards. The smaller the deck boils down to, the better. Go for a random upgrade at the same time, or do we just keep the cash? Give me the full service, heck it. Upgrade Strike, the power. Frogic says, what is the maximum scry you could have at once? You can stack the foresight effect by playing multiple copies of it, and I, I don't see any reason you wouldn't be able to scry at least 999 cards at the start of your turn. Be good, thank you so much for the four months. More Monday, midday, excuse me, it's Tuesday. Midday Tuesday card vibing. Also, heck, you're stupid debuff. Stinky nerd. How dare you even think about attacking me? Bonk. So if I want Vigilance... 
Actually, we'll do it this way, right? Because we have Roosh down. Second weave is two cards down. So I can do Vigilance, Inner Peace, Weave, Just Lucky, Weave, Weave, Just Lucky, Weave, Weave. All the dexterity in the world. Alright, show me the hand of greed. There it is. Beautiful fight. Another cut through fate is an amazing kunai activator. Further breaking the scry. Mono Espacial, thanks for the seven months. What are you doing? I think with a free upgrade, it's better than the uh, third eye. Let's keep going. Giant Head's going to be weak to our ability to play so many cards per turn. I wish we hadn't played so many cards. I choose violence. So, second weave is way far down. That's fine. I'm not going to use this scrawl, am I? Stay in Wrath and play Defend here. Let's do that. turn. Just draw cards. Just draw cards. There we go. Get an ancient tea set. Bonus energy on turn one. A third weave. Not fighting time eater? Let's do it. That's probably the maximum number of weaves that is reasonable. There's no way we're going to land Hand Agreed against Transient here. But we can at least easily win the fight. Draw next turn. That's more like it. Right, as long as we've got consistent damage output, this fight should be no problem. And the triple weaves make it pretty likely that we do just fine. Don't really care that much about stacking dexterity. What about damage? How much damage do you think we can stack? Not enough, right? I'm not motivated to play enough cards to gain 25 gold from this fight. Let's just do the bare minimum. Thanks. Let's 
I want to shuffle the deck before playing the weaves. Let's then go back to the discard pile where they belong. Doria, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sip Club. We might have had enough damage. Have you ever killed the transient before it explodes? Yes. In fact, uh, last week we had a run that ate the transient twice in the same run. We killed it with feed and gained max health two separate times. The third eye. Yeah. For three weaves? Sure. Scry everything. Scry the whole world. See if I care. Gamble for three? Yeah, we do. But this, this actually also, and this. Take a study over a third rushdown. That's too many rushdowns. Nobody needs that many rushdowns. Thank goodness the boot was here. Otherwise, I don't know what I would have done. Don't want Hand of Greed here. Discard everything except inner piece. Let's go vigilance eruption. Okay. Problem solved. down to that indignation. Maybe. Yes, with Third Eye, I definitely can. Another Entropic Brew, the third of the run, I think. Plus one passive strength with the Vajra, which will definitely help. And the Talk to the Hand that we've been waiting for, giving us block every time we strike an opponent. That should turn the attacks into block positive against Heart, accounting for Ornamental Fan. That's pretty important. If we had an Omniscience, that would have helped. Molten Egg, you're late. You're supposed to show up before Talk to the Hand. Not so bite-sized. Almost at that full year of support. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. If any deck wants a Nirvana, this deck wants a Nirvana. Another copy of Cut Through Fate works. I don't think I would take Melange. Whenever you shuffle the draw pile, scry three. It's, it's not very good, unfortunately. It doesn't do much of the things that we would want it to do. But Cheap Cut is excellent. Nirvana... Not actually required, but definitely helpful. We'll save our cash for this shop. Did they code it the way they did on purpose? I don't... I don't know. I don't think so. 
definitely awkwardly coded, just kind of has its effects time wrong, timed wrong, such that they don't really do what you'd want them to do. A bit odd. I will not be weakened by the likes of you. Stay vulnerable. Stay frosty. Now we just play a million weaves every turn. We should play Nirvana first. Got way more block than I need this turn anyway, though. And there it is. I think we all knew this was coming. The Shuriken. Now we'll do a bajillion damage at the same time. Also a second scrawl. Good talk. Also a talk to the hand plus. And you had to know it was coming, Twitch chat. The second panacea. Why else would he buy a random colorless card early in the run if not? to do this. Also perhaps meditate. Actually no. Holt's pretty good with the insane dexterity scaling. With two talk to the hands though, we're not gonna need it. Theta 9, thanks for 7 for 3 months in advance. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. How many hands will we greed here? That is the question. Careful with these weaves, they're actually very, very bad against the spiker. Let's just get powers in play, I guess. Exploder's gonna explode, unless I can find it to the hand of greed, which is really unlikely, considering its location in the deck. So I think we just kill the exploder. Completely fine. Power of discarding things. Thank you. 
Let's discard everything. Easy money. Empty Fist. Deals damage and exits our stance. That could be kind of useful. I think a way to leave Wrath is kind of nice. Let's grab this Empty Fist just for a bit more stance control. Do people work full-time as streamer slash YouTube support? How many do people... Not quite sure I uh, rock the rest of it, Spirit Sparrow. Nobody works full-time on this stream other than me. Um, Riley is my YouTube editor, and he runs a... a business essentially called RC Online. His full-time job is helping people with their YouTube channels, but he helps more than just me with uh, YouTube. Alright, 56 health into the boss gauntlet. That feels pretty good, generally speaking. Hmm, talk to the hands not so effective in this fight. I'm gonna go with the good instincts, considering. Skip the talk to the hand here. Let's go rush down. Inner piece. Pantrum. Draw me some cards. Perfect. All right, now the silliness may begin. Good, yes. <laughs> nice turn one. Second hand agreed. Hmm. Easy. Just full block with your seven dexterity. Well in wrath. All your problems will be solved, Twitch chat. GG. Who's next? It is the Awakened One. Not only does this give us more money than Time Eater, but it'll be easier than Time Eater. And that's good. All of the weaves are really far down. That's not good. Definitely don't love that part. Definitely be putting Foresight in play. Scrawl next turn looks pretty good. Secret attack for a card I don't want to draw, like Indignation. But I know where it is in the draw pile, so I don't think I care that much. To 
discard Nirvana for now. Okay, that looks pretty reasonable. Keep the secret tech around, I guess. Also don't need both tantrum and eruption. Let's just keep the eruption. Actually, do take a little bit of damage here. Might be okay, because of the puzzle, actually. Probably for the best. As they say. Use both talk to the hands right now, because I think I need the help. And then what? Inner peace. Empty fist? Let's continue to make an enormous amount of block happen. Seems good. Cacao. Okay, could choose to play a power, but I don't have to. that next turn. Kill the Awakened One next turn, that is. And then discard the... Actually, discard nothing. I want to draw all of these cards so that all the weaves are in my hand. And then we draw before playing any of the weaves. So let's go wheel kick. Weave, weave, weave. Tantrum. Just lucky. All right, now it gets stupid. So weave, weave. Wait, uh, hand agreed. Hold on, hand agreed. We have to be able to hand agreed. We can do, right? Uh, not quite. The things as they are now. Next turn. Akapanak, thanks for 44 months. Gotta love them dubs. Easy money. All right, we've made fat stacks of cash off the bosses. I think 125 gold from our boss fights with this hand agreed. That's pretty intense, man. We deal 2598 owing to our huge pile of money. And we stride into Act 4. I think this run has really good odds. We're currently on track to get two card masteries done, Panacea and... Uh, Weave, if we're lucky, we can pick up another copy of Like Water here. Apparently it's time for a break. Nah, we'll do that after the run. Time to break the heart. No Like Water, unfortunately. We could get a cut through fate. None of these... Actually, bottled uh, bottled scry power is pretty good. If I was going to bottle any card in the deck, Foresight is pretty strong. 
Let's do that. And then I can just barely afford this cutthroat fate. Sure. So how many cutthroat fates is that? Four. Four upgraded cutthroat fates. You'll love to see it. The Supermaster. Sorry, Hand Agreed. You are no longer of use to us. Very interesting turn coming up. I think I actually do want to take two damage here. Yeah, we can do some stuff here. Hmm, actually, wait. Now, forget taking damage. Well, that rush down. Don't have blue candle this time. So we can go weave. Empty fists. Just lucky. Next turn we can get Third Eye and Scrawl together. It's pretty good. This is looking like a really good start to this fight. And yes, definitely the combination of the Frozen Eye and the Scry letting me really get through the deck and find the cards that I most want. The hand of powerfulness that I most want. It's all good. It's all very, very good. See, there is no way out of wrath in the draw pile, which is fine, because I can do this, right? Who cares? For I am almighty. Beautiful. Get a fossilized helix, preventing the first instance of damage to hearts. And uh, no second copy of like water, unfortunately. Skip. Yeah, that was unfair to those poor elites, wasn't it? Wasn't it? All right. How's the heart going to do here? Flash of steel. We got talk to the hand turn one. Looks like we'll take some beat of death damage, but other than that, this is going to go exceedingly well. Oh wait, we have uh, Boat Thingy. No, we're fine, actually. Boat Thingy saves the day. This would be a hilarious turn to use the Ambrosia on. I don't think we use it this turn, do we? Although the burst of energy... I could actually get a lot done with an Ambrosia turn one, and I want to drink the Entropic Brew. You know what? Heck it. I'm in Divinity now. And there's a Bottle of Miracle and a Skill Potion inside. You got it. Kind of see it a block vulnerable seems pretty good. Let's 
Second talk to the hand isn't playing. Yeah, this feels right. Another scroll next turn looks pretty good as well. I don't really want to draw this then. I think we just end with empty fists. Capped damage on turn one. That's a pretty good sign also. Hit me! Five. Just lucky discards wound. We will draw into that void though. kick either. Alright, just draw the exhausting statuses. I'm gonna go, what, inner peace, third eye? That feels right. Okay. I think we might keep this buffer for the whole fight, actually. That's how I'm currently feeling. Let's check this turn out. Um, actually, I did that slightly wrong. Discard this. Three weaves. What's in the raw pile now? Inner peace. Cool. We can use a rupture to get that. These weaves are so stupid. In the best way. Hundred block. I can gain more stats, but does it actually even help me? I'm not sure. Bonk. 126 block this time. Or heart really has no chance, huh? Okay, let me try something. There it is! Easy every time. Bonk. Thanks for the money. Hee <laughs> hee. GG. Spire was scrappy, but we managed to duck and weave our way through to win. Left that poor heart scrying for its mama. With how strong we've done. GG. GG. Cryptolo, thanks for that full heckin' year. Look at that 12 months sub. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. And Blue Soldier, GG to ya. Final stats on Frozen Eye. Probably less than five minutes. Let's see. Vinzan, thanks for the prime sub. Appreciate you. Six minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Triple weave, double panacea, quad cut through fate. Triple just lucky. What a fun run. 
So two runs successful today, two masteries on each. We're even on a four streak. How nice. How nice. Yeah, hopefully Kate on that run showed off what weave can do. Once you've got it, even just one of the ninja relics, uh, the, the card weave becomes very, very good. And with three of them, the kunai shuriken and ornamental fan, holy moly, we really crushed it. Truly crushed it. Well, Twitch chat, I think that's all the Spire action I've got for today. Uh, I want to do some, as the title suggests, uh, some Wild Frost and check out more of that cozy deck builder. So that is what we're going to be doing next here, is jumping over to Wild Frost. I could pull it up, Steve, with a B, but unfortunately the, the character stat screen is wildly inaccurate, so it won't actually give you any information that is true. So we're going to switch games in a moment. Before that, though, I need to take a break, refill the leg, stretch the water, grab a quick snack. So back in several minutes, Twitch chat, when I return, we'll be playing some Wild Frost and frosting it up. Mr. Fishhead, glad you've been enjoying Curse of the Dead Gods. Really quite a good good action roguelite from the, from the devs. All right, BRB, everybody. Don't go nowhere.
Alrighty, Twitch chat, we are back. Let's kick it on over to some Wild Frosts. I'm excited to revisit this cute little title. Like says, is it just me or is Wild Frost really hard? That's the consensus I heard, is that Wild Frost is indeed really hard. We've lost all but one of our runs so far. Uh, we were able to, to get one successful run off the back of what seemed like a pretty strong champ, and we're jumping back in here today to see if we can get another successful run or two in Wild Frost. Pretty tricky little game, part Tactical positioning game, part deck builder. Wild Frost is a game where you 
Begin by choosing a leader to lead your crew. We've got some interesting options here. Each leader has a random portrait, random stats, health and attack power, and some keywords as well. Some really interesting options here. Claystone is aimless, hits a random target three times for one damage, or Landsnow here, one time for eight damage, a random target. Crod, meanwhile, freezes enemies with the snow ability, although only applying two seems kind of weak. Indeed, aimless, not as bad as it looks. Being able to hit enemies in the back row actually has quite a lot of value. Uh, I could see Claystone in particular being pretty dang powerful. Should you prep Wild Frost? Frost for plays? I think so, Faley. I think uh, Wild Frost will do really well on the plays channel. I've got uh, high hopes for it. Yeah, be because we could potentially find uh, stacking attack bonuses, this times three aimless seems like it could be really, really quite strong. Let's try out Claystone here. That's me. Let's go. Let me choose a pet, Snoof or a Bushu. So just a, a quick description of stats on units here. Health in the top left, attack power in the top right, and then the golden star on the bottom is the counter value. That's how many card plays have to occur before this unit will take its action. We're playing with the first difficulty. I think there's at least five of these that you can unlock. And indeed, you can do that. That's great. So, why is there a naked gnome here? I'm not sure. Start of each battle, we can put down our leader here, and then we draw a hand of six cards from which we can play. Each card takes one turn, so every time a card is played, the counter value of every unit on the field will decrease, and anybody that hits zero will do their thing. Let's put Snoop in front. Sword them. Every so often, indicated by the turn counter here on the side of the screen, new enemies will enter the battlefield. Once our redraw bell is charged here, we can redraw without spending a turn. Normally it takes a turn to redraw. Oh yeah, flame water makes Baylor a lot stronger. Have some flame water. The goblin drops money when struck and will eventually flee from the battle. That's fine. Give him a snow stick. Oh, I see. There's something happens if you keep that gnome alive, huh? I understand. That's right, you can also use combo kills to get you more gold. Although, quite frankly, the process of setting up combo kills during early battles feels to me uh, tedious. Fact in two turns.
Enemies attack first. So that was worth setting up for that. Easy combo kill there. The more kills you can get in one turn, uh, the better. So between battles, you usually get to choose uh, like north-south pathing. Frozen Travelers means pick one of three new units. Um, treasure means pick one of three new item cards. Blink Snail Cave gives us money directly, and Charm gives us upgrades to use on our cards. I'm going to grab the Charm and the Frozen Travelers here. Bing bing. What do we got here? Chompom. Deals additional damage equal to the shell. Colonel, when hit, applies shell to an ally behind. I like Colonel. Or Fire Fist. When health is lost, gain... Spice. Let's take Colonel again. Welcome back, Colonel. Let's go. Gain three shell on kill. Helpful. Shell synergy. I can apply that to anybody yet. I want to see what we get from this crystal thing also. Yeah, it looks like a casual game, but it's anything but. Little berry. Bonus damage when healed. Bun gun. It's got good health. Oh, we haven't tried wallop yet. Wallop does huge additional damage to frozen targets. Let's pick up wallop here. Let's go. And let's see, gain shell on kill. Arguably, we want to put that on our champ, who's most likely going to be getting kills. Better yet, multiple kills per turn. Let's put that on me. One card can have up to three charms, is my understanding. Shroodles. Fly poison. How dare they? You don't get to move. Note that with ability like Colonel's, you are allowed to target yourself with uh, damage effects, even zero damage effects, in order to activate the when hit effect. Let's see here. Let's just sword you, I guess. Oh no, when hit you gain teeth, right? I don't want that. So the Shrudels will go first. Oh, let's clang the redraw bell. I think that means we just want to sword the Shrudels. Although, you're going to get teeth as Baylor lands hits here. That's a bit awkward. Hmm. Spooky. I think this is okay. No, it was not okay. Er, yeah, it is okay. No, no, no. We're fine. I panicked a little bit. The shrooms won't kill us. I thought they might for a second. But all is well. For now. For now. 
Yeah, you have barrage. We can't allow that. Let's get another unit onto the field. Uh, accounting for the barrage, actually, we should have separated Colonel and Baylor during that last move, that last turn. We are allowed to reposition our units anywhere we want on the battlefield each and every turn. So that is absolutely something to think about. Is there a mana or card cost? No, but each card takes one turn, meaning that the number on all units on the field decreases by one each time a card is played. Now let's get Woodhead on the field here. This gobbling might not uh, stick around too much. Hit the Woodhead with your aimless nonsense. This should get snowballed. We'll do it this way. So we should snowstick the goblin. You'll get bonked. And KO'd. Good. And then we can kill you. Easy money. All right, now we have a bit more of an issue. The Shrudels are real. They're about to activate. We can save Colonel here by recalling, pulling the unit back into our deck. Heals them for five. Got some problems here. Dabeen Boy, thanks for the six months advance of subbage. Appreciate it. All right, you're going to get frozen. So Colonel will KO the Puffball. We'll recall Colonel next turn, I think. We should maybe consider getting a unit on the field here. How about Snoof? Let's put Snoof on the fields. All right, this looks like a bit uh, problematic here. Veiled Lady is going to kill Snoof. That's fine. But we want to keep Colonel and Wallop and Baylor all intact here. So maybe put Colonel back into the deck and then hit the redraw bell. We want to draw the ice ability to use on these nerds. Or we could even have uh, Snoo freeze the Shrudels if you want to. But then the Veiled Lady has to kill something else. Either Colonel or Wallop. That's not acceptable. Let's do this. Recall you, which is a free action. And then redraw bell for free also. And now we can freeze and kill you. Uh, and we should just sword this puffball. Like this. Mm -hmm. 
We can recall Wallop to save them from the poison here. In fact, let's just bonk immediately then. We'd like to kill both Bulbhead and the Veiled Lady on the same turn, if possible. I think we can do that. Yes. And then Sunrod. Okay, that went pretty well. Our pet got injured, but no biggie. Or Snoofykins. Give me another charm and more frozen travelers. Actually, quite like that as options here. Snuffle can apply ice to all enemies. Definitely a nice support unit. Blunky gains Blunk. Essentially, Buffer. When deployed, blocks a whole instance of damage, and then the idea is you recall Blunky. Also, attacks every other turn, which is kind of interesting. Wake of Insanity, thanks for 28 months of support. If your unit perishes during a combat, they'll be injured during the next combat, starting at half health and half combat damage. Uh, simply go through a combat without having that unit die to remove the injury. Yeah, Snuffle plus Wallop, that's kind of cool. Anytime anything is snowballed, gain equal attack power, says Yuki. This could actually be really helpful for our final battle, actually. Because we know that uh, one of our final combatants here, actually we can look at uh, the units we know are going to be in the final fight here. Foxy applies three snowball three times with one damage. So we could stack tons of damage for the final fight. That's kind of interesting. That said, I like being able to apply additional ice to everybody. That's right. Also, that means a 1-1 one, one unit has no fear of injury because it, its combat stats can't be further reduced. You know what? I am going to try you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am going to try Yuki out. Let's, let's see what Yuki can do. Let's go. Snoof will be left out for now. Balance Charm. Set health, attack power, and cooldown to three. Wow. Um, that's just a straight upgrade to Yuki. Like, every stat gets better. Oh, I do have it wrong. Hold on. I think we can change that too, right? Yeah, hold on. Thankfully, we're allowed to change that anytime. The power. <clears throat> also decent on Blunky, I agree. So, shops sell the exceedingly valuable crown items. Crowns allow you to... Put a card in play at the start of battle, essentially for free. Could also buy a charm, although I think Snow Globe is better here. Apply for snow for and deal zero damage. Reduce by one when played. And that's very good with the Yuki and the Wallop both. So we definitely want this card. So who wants to start in play? Let's have Colonel start in play.
Onward to our first boss. Most bosses seem to have two phases. Once you deplete their health the first time, they'll flip over to a second form. Colonel's really nice counter to the Makokos here. Wait, what? Oh, this one has an upgrade. Oh, geez, that's horrifying. I just processed what I was looking at. Yeah, that Makoko got an insane charm indeed. Holy crap, it's terrifying. It attacks twice randomly and gains plus one attack power with each attack. Dear Lord, we must stop it. Freeze it forever. Make it die, please. I'm just gonna watch out for Porcupine here. I think we'll freeze that too. Yeah, that'll make uh, Yuki kill. Mm -hmm. Vertico attacks both rows, so we just want Colonel here. Give Yuki some block. Actually, let's do it this way. Er, no. Okay, this is fine. Can hit the boss, I was wondering. In fact, it can do so three times if it wants to. That's just how it works. Awkward. So we can just take the two damage to our champ here if we want to. That's completely reasonable. Uh, maybe we should just kill this Frostinger with the Sunrod. Let's do that. Okay, boss will again attack both rows. Only two attack power here. Just hit Colonel, please. I do not like this Porcupine. I can actually withdraw Colonel now. I think that's an extremely reasonable idea. Let's see, not able to set up a lot of combo kills all that easily, but that's fine. Uh, I think the boss dying just ends the stage. And you know what? I'm kind of cool with that. Oh, but I don't have the sun thing. Will then. Let's 
So you're gonna tank and kill. But not before these go. Don't think we get to do anything else on the turn, right? Like, Yuki won't swing, I don't think. Oh, they do! Okay. I'm glad we set it up that way, then, for five extra gold. Just need to kill the boss to, uh, to win the stage. Did I play any Wild Frost between the last stream and this one? I did not. So, we can choose a reward after our first boss here. Either plus one to card draw, plus one to the number of companions we can have, plus one to the number of unit cards we're allowed to have, or minus one to the redraw bell counter, so we can redraw more frequently, essentially. I'm a big fan of simply increasing the draw count, um, but I, I could see the other options being just as good under the right circumstances. What was the blue debuff from the top level attacker? Demonize. It's like vulnerable. Makes the unit take double damage. Pretty bad. Yeah, adding an extra unit is not bad, but trying to keep that unit alive is quite a challenge sometimes. I do think I'm going to want to take plus one companion limit from the next boss. I really do gotta do some number crunching on card draw plus one versus redraw bell minus one in terms of like how often you can see the same card. They feel almost identical to me in terms of what they're trying to do. Feels odd. Let's see, that'll be a pretty good merchant. I want another crown. Give me a crown. Demona. Eyes demon eyes. Goes pretty often as well. Wart applies aimless poison, and Bonnie is an AoE health restore. Let's try out Demona here. I do not know if she's going to. be a part of the team overall, though. Temporarily reduce attack power. Snowcake, apply 12 ice. Uh, yeah. Gonna buy that, and I'm gonna buy a charm. Bread charm, gain consume. So I can have a card be one-time use if I want it to be. Which is not necessarily something you want. It's good for, for example, having a basic card not be redrawn. But yeah, Snowcake seems absurd here with, uh, with Yuki. I guess we'll put Consume on one of these Scrappy Swords. Or like, Crappy Sword. Onward. Additional damage equal to its shell value. Pretty slow unit, though. Shell which attacks and gives shell to everybody. Can does four damage and gains shell. Yeah, see, this is what I was worried about. To redraw to get Yuki down. That's fine.
Pizza Mice. wanted the block to go somewhere else, but it's all good. Not sure I want everybody to be gaining two acorn though. Good bonk first. Sunrod. Skip this unit's turn. Although we would like to set up uh, chain kills where possible. I can get a combo by sunrodding Yuki right now. That's kind of reasonable. Sure, let's do that. Icy time. Let's see here. You're going to go in front. You're also getting bopped. You gain thorns, Yuki will perish. If Yuki bop this one instead. You don't actually have any damage, huh? So just freeze this one then. That's actually fine then. Here's our boss, Bulgo. All right, Yuki is about to go. Hit the redraw bell here, and the shell witch is about to go. Let's redraw. Yeah, the snowbot's getting bigger. Bigger. Must become bigger. So, do we want a combo or what here? Sure, Wallop can take the hit. Let's go for the combo. Stuff will come in. We can try to set up more combos, or we can just go for an absolutely bunk and good time and kill here. Let's let's see if we can get some more money somehow. Five attack power on Bulko. We won't allow that. No, no.
Six attack power, huh? And freeze bull go again, or we can use the sun rod to get Yuki to go. Act immediately. Let's just freeze you. Got a gobbling. Okay, so that's good for money. Let's just redraw. All right, boss is gonna crunk something. Tank it with our champ, actually. And I can, like, ice myself if I want to. I think that's the way to get the most money here. Seems counterintuitive, but we're looking to scrounge up every iota of cash we can find. If we Sunrod Baylor, that'll work well. Although we'd like them both to do on the same turn, yes? So we want to do this. need to be Sunrod. Sunrod on Wallop helps, kind of. It's not really relevant. Actually, no, it will help. Observe. The combo. Oh, actually, we don't get a kill on the goblin, but we do hit it a bunch of times. Money. Okay, I think that was probably worth it. Let's hit the Muncher up. Muncher can remove two item cards from the deck, letting us get rid of these other two scrappy swords. Let's go in Ubla. You are in a very cold place. Thanks for 22 months. Blaze T. Add one frenzy, but increase the counter by one. Bling back. Whenever an enemy is ga killed, gain four dollar bucks. Or spice sparklers. While well, active, add plus two attack power to items in our hand, like the scrappy sword and the snow stick. Not sure we want to do that, but Blaze T or Bling Bank are both interesting. Blaze T on Yuki, actually amazing. Give me this. Feed the Muncher. Nom. Nom. Muncher is removed too. All right, we got some chunky enemies now. Three teeth. While active, add aimless to all enemies. Deals additional damage if, a ro if alone. Hmm. 
Ah, Mero. Well, active add spikes to all allies. Okay, that's what's happening. Oh, I understand now. Yeah, cooldown just goes back to her original value. That's right. Oh, our units get aimless. That's fine. Not their units. I don't know if this works immediately or not. Yes, you do take the counter penalty immediately. Faster! Paw, paw. Gain thorns when hit. Don't love that. Smack back. Counter attack after taking a hit. Interesting. Get him, Yuki. Maja. Trigger when hit. This card will activate when hit. See why that might be an issue. Yeah, I can see why that might be an issue. I don't know that freezing will do what we want it to do. Let's find out. I feel like freezing is going to make an act attack immediately. Okay, no. Trigger means it just counts down. That's fine. Uh, Wallop's going to KO you. Is there anything I can do about that? I don't think so. Maybe I just didn't understand how that mechanic worked. Alright, we have tons of money for this next shop. Give me some more charms. Charms can really change everything for us here. 
Bint Charm, gain draw two on kill. Interesting. Newblin Biscuit. Ah, and there's a Numlin charm. Perfect. Numlin cards do not end your turn when played. They're essentially free. Free actions, which makes them really, really good. I like a Numlin sunrod quite a lot. Yeah, draw two on kill is really interesting. Let's put that on Yuki. Numlin, Numlin, yay. Adorable. 70 for another charm? I don't think I want the Numlin biscuit, do I? Yes, Yuki definitely a little challenging to stay alive. That's where, uh... Defensive units have to come in play. Give me another charm. Snowball charm. Apply one snowball. Ooh. I can put that on a card or on a unit. Oh, I can put it on me? Love it. Wait, Newlin on Yuki. Can you put Newlin on your unit cards? Didn't even occur to me that you might want to do that. Huh. How's it going, Kalka? Life is good. Right, we got Demona also. Definitely, definitely would like some tankiness. I could buy another charm. I'm not going to though. Oh yeah, and don't forget to equip the crown. That's right. Yuki, you start in play now. Trouble. That's right. This boss splits in half once losing enough health. And we can just ice the heck out of it. Although it only splits after losing 10 health. It's still fine. Can use this time to get set up. Should have read what that thing did. All right, we're going to be able to do some serious damage in a moment. The redraw here. Super Sunrod. Uh, let's use the Sunrod here. That'll cause Wallop to split the truffle, and then Yuki will attack twice. Actually, we won't even attack twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Bonk. 
And those will likewise split momentarily here. We don't want to kill the puffball yet, do we? These enemies have no chance. Poor little things. Shrewded. Strike the redraw bell. Actually, get rid of this. No, just strike the redraw bell. Get that sunrod back. Maybe a triple. Oh, this seems OP. Destroy self. the boss. Fair enough. Give me another companion. The Absolute Zero, thanks for the three months of support. An ice cannon, yeah. Crystalline cannon. That's what we are. Durable. It's actually much, much more powerful with a second uh, point of item health there. It means it takes two hits of any amount of damage to kill. Hog. Oh, Warthog is spooky. Attack after taking a hit, huh? We'll see about that. We just hit the redraw bell, let Colonel get a bunch of block for Baylor. And yeah, the Warthog is going to gain multi-attack when the other hogs die, is the spooky thing here. This 
This better work. Good stuff. Usually a good sign if there's nothing to attack at all. Rock hog. While active, add one frenzy to all allies. Wallop and Yuki are both about to act, and Yuki will attack twice even. Let's just get a big combo, hey? Yeah, they, this... This is multi-strike here, and then the exclamation point is reaction. Let's do this. Yeah, that's a sweet combo. gonna act and then this stuff is gonna come in. Okay. Wait, I redrew the sunrod again instantly. Cute. Easy money. Yeah, that's not going to happen, sorry. of the storm. It's going to be our boss here. I would like to go to the Woolly Snail, so we're probably going to remove two more cards here. Um, do we get just get rid of the Scrappy Sword outright? And I guess I can lose Flame Water as well. That sounds good to me. Feed the Muncha. Consume the Consume card. Yeah, we don't have to lose two, but we do want to. Apply some shield, it could be interesting. Definitely buy a crown. Definitely buy a charm. Probably buy two charms. Reduce attack power by two. That can be useful on our own cards. For example, we could have made a zero attack power sword and use that to apply block on Colonel. When destroyed, deal eight damage to enemies in the row. You're telling me I can put that on Woodhead here. That's pretty good. And you know what? Let's just buy another charm. We got the money for it. Gain smack back. Counterattack after taking a hit. That's quite good on... Well, I would say it was good on Wallop, but Wallop won't be able to do bonus damage with this. I guess it makes sense on Colonel. Or on Baylor, even. I 
I can work on Yuki if given block from Colonel. That also makes sense. Baylor applying snow will stop multi-hits. Give me that. Cool. All right, the eye of the storm is where our past self, our evil version with barrage lives. Bigger berry and pyra get deployed. I forgot to use my crown. Oh well. Seven damage barrage is pretty bad. Big Berry's been juicing. I want to just absorb that barrage with Woodhead. So who's getting froze? Pyra needs to be killed before she does anything. Let's freeze Bigger Berry here. And we're going to give Baylor the block. that way, though. Pootie's kind of annoying. Don't need more frost on Barry, so heck. get in play. Sure. There's Foxy. Alright, how do we want to do this? I guess Foxy really doesn't matter, because we could just instantly kill Foxy. Good talk. Grizzle's a new friend. So it's time to break the game, yes? Easy. Whoa. Oh, right. Times three. Jesus. For some reason, I didn't anticipate that. Well, that's bad. Yes, I failed to notice that I had times three attack. That's not good. Uh, I think we're dead, right? Yeah, I think we're dead. I killed everybody. Uh, although, hold on. I might be able to do something here. Yeah, I failed to notice I had a multi-strike. Bummer. 
Six Whooper says, most of my losses in this game are from just overlooking one interaction that swings the battle. Yes, which is why the the lack of quality of life features with, with regards to stuff like that is, is jarring. Uh, I would describe, for example, Monster Train. Without the combat preview, Monster Train would be almost unplayable because you would have this happen all the time. Wild Frost gives you no tools for assisting with the, the calculation and mental load, which is a little bit annoying. Definitely. Makes the game very unforgiving. But yeah, it looks like we're uh, we're dead. I could Numelin myself, but to what end? I don't do enough damage now. Although... No, this is not going to work, right? Yeah, we just don't do any damage, so this is never going to work. GG. GG. Uh, where's the surrender button? Where's the combat log? How do you handle aimless? Oh, you recognize that aimless is a, a terrible mechanic. I think that's what you do with Aimless. <laughs> uh, genuinely, where's the abandoned run option? Yeah, whatever. There isn't one. Also odd. Yeah, when it comes to a combat preview, what you do with random damage is you take it, you put it in the garbage can. We do get some good unlocks, though. That was a, that was a really good run. We, I think we could have could have with some slightly different play won that final battle. We definitely had a, a broken run that we could have used. Let's uh, let's do another one. Am I a fan of this game slash would recommend? Yes, I think this game is is very well done. It's brutal, uh, unhelpful, and combative at times, despite being cute. Um, and uh, definitely a challenge, but it's also quite good. Challenge stones. I would also really appreciate... some kind of summary for each of these buildings as to what they actually do. This game is in full release. That's right, so we can see new charms to unlock. Gnome Friend. We need the Gnome Friend. So we'll have to fight that version of ourselves again. New companion, Snobble. Apply snow equal to damage dealt. Deal 10 damage to your own team to unlock the next one. Add three clunkers. Still have not made clear what a clunker even is. The Clunk Masters. Ah. The Lost Tribe of the Gnomes. These master tinkerers use junk and a scrap to power to fuel powerful clunkers and weapons. Striking a balance between creating and recycling junk to power machinery and weaponry is fundamental to the clunk master strategy. <laughs> it does take some restraint, fireworks. All right, let's try the clunk master's bomb. Apply one bomb, causing the enemy to take additional damage from all sources. I think Leaf is also just quite good. I think a countdown three on the champ seems pretty good. Let's do it. Doof. Yeah, incredibly well done for a team of two. 
Before the Wild Frost, gnomes were a peaceful race who spent their days tinkering with clunkers and crafting magnificent machines. After the Wild Frost, the remaining gnomes banded together and developed new clunkers to help them navigate the cold, harsh environment. Their once-thriving town of Gnome Lodge was lost during the storm. But the gnomes persevered. Yeah, all the names in the journal are, are pretty good. Wild Snoolf. Not a snoof, a snoolf. Gear Hammer. Upgrades when played. Junk does nothing. Flask of Ink. Silences effects. Slightly unclear. The bunking. Okay, yeah, so that stops it from applying the thingy. Good. Snowzooka. Apply for snowball. Double effect if this is the rightmost card in your hand. Sunsong box. Acquires junk in your hand to play. Destroys the junk. Interesting. Hm. Ink removes effectively the entire text box of a card, which seems real good like. for that. And I can play junk for four bucks there. I don't want to use the ink on the goblin, because... Wait, why did that do damage? Oh, because it had the debuff. Yes, of course. That makes sense. The bomb. No nights, no problem. Turning. And so are the charms. I'll probably have to revisit some treasure nodes eventually. So far, I've been extremely unimpressed. 
by uh, what I've found in them. I think the basic, the, the like the core combat mechanics of this game, fireworks are really, really well done. There's a lot of interesting stuff. Nom and Stumpy. When a card is destroyed, count down by one. It's a 10-10 with a counter of 10. Interesting. BG. Apply to bomb. Increases by more when BG is hit. Interesting. Recycling trash counts as destroying it. So does killing enemies. Let's try it. Let's go. Smack BG with junk. Yes. Hmm. This adds consume. Frenzy Charm on a Gear Hammer is okay. I'm not sure what we want to put this on, though. I'm going to hold on to the Frenzy Charm for the moment. Yeah, Consume would also destroy, of course. Wow, you're crazy for counter two. What? I'll take some snow. Some. Yeah, we might want to prevent the, the bear from applying stuff back to us. Sure. Still gonna attack for four, though. We almost perish here. Let's not do that, then. Better to snow gobbler. How do you lose the game if your champ perishes? Baylor here. This if this unit dies, oh no, they only have six L's, so they can die very easy. Uh, the run is over.
Nice. Bumbo. All right, these hammers do a lot of damage. Here, you take this hit, Dom. Put Nam back into her hand and heal. Vaguely tempting. Let's kill this porcupine before it does anything. So the Junkhead can block Bumbo. Killing the Frostinger will cause Nom and Stompy to bump. Should work well, actually. So yeah, we can get a twofer here. Beautiful. 17 attack power, huh? Looks like we have to sacrifice Snoop for that. Let's see this working. Unless this works. It does, good. Excellent. Get bonked. Too bad. That's right. Barrage just means the current row gets hit. Reduce the target's effects by one. Interesting. The target's effects. Haze Balloon. Apply Haze to the attacker when attacking hit a random ally instead. Seems pretty cool. Do all gear hammers get plus one attack when you use one? No, just the one that you used. Haze Balloon seems really strong. Let me grab that. Turn a powerful enemy against each other. Against their allies. wonder if you can attack yourself with that effect. Bomb charm. Apply one bomb. Cool. Hmm. Add frenzy to an item in your hand by recycling two. Interesting. Oh, perfect. Can even apply that to ourselves. Interesting.
Crown on haze balloon is interesting. We'll put crown on Nom for now. Start with Nom and Stompy in play. Yeah, Sun Cream seems intriguing. Give it a try here. Bomb charm on me? I think so. Such that I apply two bomb. Yeah, Lumen Lantern is uh, curious, that's for sure. Seems spooky. Bamboozle! It's everybody when it attacks. So is this going to put me to two for the whole fight? Is that what I'm understanding correctly? Yeah, we're now at one out of two. It's pretty sweet. Give you teeth. I can counter your hits all enemies effects? That's pretty strong. I'll just hammer you. Now you're talking. I think we can set up a big combo here. Yeah, perfect. Balloon can wipe out this. Hoping we can get Grouchy at the same time, but I don't see a way to do it. In that case, you get tank. Undamaged. Don't be a kill either way, right? Go. 
so now we just let's see you're gonna hit for four plus two that won't be enough so we got a gear hammer here this should be at least five kills Ka-ching! Card draw! Is it munching time? I would definitely not mind having less gear hammers so that we can just draw the same gear hammers more. Let's lose two of these gear hammers. Hello. Goodbye. Crego. When a card is destroyed, gain one attack power. Skaven. Adds junk to your hand. Good stat line, too. Or fizzle. Applies bomb times three. Skaven looks great. Give me cards to destroy for Nam and Stumpy. Fizzle OP? I could definitely see it. I mean, times three attack is pretty pretty absurd. Let's try Skaven here. He looks like a friend. Destroy a card in your hand with Noomlin Mini Muncher. Oh my. Can't buy a crown alongside it though. Boggy Brew, apply one aimless. Oh my, that's also kind of hype. Hit a random ally instead of attacking. Kind of dig that. We can do crown and foggy brew. I really like that. But the mini muncher is definitely interesting. Jab joke. one of these? That's fine. Pretty good damage output. take double damage. That's more or less fine.
Here, have this. That's kind of cute. Let's get some combo going, hey? Mutton head. This is a triple. Triple's good. Junk? Feels like we need more ways to get rid of junk. Um, hmm. Porcupine is a bit of an issue, huh? I guess Skaven will live. Combo. We'll let Snoof get killed for that. Give me the money. We ink our own unit to remove the junk keyword. Yes, I think we could if we wanted to. Didn't occur to me that we could do that, but you're absolutely right. Ooh, ink every enemy? Blunder tank. Attack for five whenever a junk is destroyed, or sunglass time chime. When destroyed, trigger all allies. I don't think we quite clarified what the trigger word means. Count the countdown all the way to zero. That seems good. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Snuffles back. Haze blazer. Apply one haze. Take two health from all allies. No way. Let me snuffle. Snoof, you're out. Snuffle, you're in. And a balance charm, heck yeah. That is pretty dang good on Snoffle. Oh, can't go on Snoffle. Come on. Why not? Because Snoffle has no attack power? I guess so. Bummer.
Three trigger Nomin Stompy, except it becomes a 3-3, three, three, so... Although the three attack power counting down still every time something is destroyed is not bad. Frenzy Hammer would, yeah, do two and then three, I think. And with Sun Sun Box, actually, it would be a two count Nomin Stompy. That's kind of absurd, actually. Okay, I can see where you're coming from, Twitch chat. Means we no longer have anything that can really tank damage. I guess Skaven is okay. Generic points out that is still one damage per destroyed card. Regardless of whether or not we have the charm active. I'm not convinced that we want to use the balance charm here. Not yet. With bombs, it changes. That's true. And if we bring the count down to two, it's actually two damage per card. Okay, okay. Let's try it. Because of sun cream, mostly. Oh god. And all units are aimless. Hmm. Trickier, very trickier. Although we can just ink the marrow, right? And then that's not a problem. We could also ink the smog. Both are valid options. way. Okay, the paw paws are going to be a real problem for Nob and Stumpy. They gain three teeth when they're hit. How do I deal with that? 
Oh, I can ink them, of course. That's one way to do it. Uh, you need to die momentarily, actually. how I wanted that to go. That'll have to do. Jaw. Great, more pawpaws. Just what I needed. Alright, you're gonna explode on that row. You are not allowed to gain spikes. the Sunsong box here. Let's do it. That is pretty strong. Have a beer. for you. GG. Nice. Do I have anything to munch? I think we already munched all the munchables. Give me money. And a charm. Top to bottom, front to back, enemies go first. That's right. Bling charm. Gain bucks from each kill. Nom. Is that the right pink? No idea. Crash 2 to do 8 damage. Fly 1 Haze. And Frenzy. Hmm. Frenzy on Nom and Stompy could be interesting. Could also be pretty good on Snuffle, actually. Plus three aimless. Also not bad on Nom and Stompy. Or am I saving my frenzy charm for? Not sure. Um, magma booster, maybe. Then it would increase attack power by six with aimless. That seems that seems good. Yeah, actually.
Ooh. Apply three ink. Make it seven ink on Flask of Ink. Or I could have two ink cards. Let's add ink to Snowzuka. Oh, can I put that on Snuffle? I don't think so, right? Showed as possible. Hmm. Interesting. Based on what I know of the game mechanics, that shouldn't apply ink to all enemies. And if it does, then there's an inconsistency, I think. Yeah, it doesn't apply to any AoE, so it's friendly RAM. Okay, that's that's what I thought. Because there's nothing about the ink itself that applies an effect to all enemies, and Snoffle doesn't target all enemies. So it's not as it's not what you want it to do. Not how it works. Let's see here. Karunker. It's an item boss. Right, this is going to be extra stupid. Smack back. Counterattack after taking a hit. Hmm. Okay, so don't be in that row for now. It's going to be awkward as heck. This thing. attack. The Spooncher. Let's just do this, I guess. works too, yes? Another spike wall. Have a blast. We wanted Baylor in front there, actually. Definitely a lot of stuff happening.
We're gonna need to ink this thing. Which I can just do by redrawing. Let's do that. And this does the bombard thing, which is no good. Now we need to keep inking Crunker here. Gotta get crunked. But it will still attack the front unit of both rows, I believe. Which I think means losing Snopple here. Hmm. That's no good, Firebird. Can you shoot me a message on Discord with uh, identifying the, the account in question, Firebird, so I can take care of that? That would be very appreciated. All right, so I think we need to use the Haze Balloon here to stop Krunker from killing whoever's in the front line. Again, we had a loose Snopple. Careful about the attack back, too. Hmm. We foggy through the boss. Yes, actually, this is guaranteed to hit the boss, is it not? All right, let's see what that does. <laughs> Get attacked by your own friend, you stupid nerd. Mm. Nice try. for devastation. Oops. Definitely forgot about that. I thought it was only the bottom row. Uh, that's a bit awkward. Hmm. Yes, that's definitely awkward. Well, that's a little annoying. Too bad, though. I think this is the way to do it. We're gonna find out. Should be no attack back if you die. Although the thorns are an issue, yeah? Yeah, there's just so many things to keep track of in this game. Hmm. Targeting your own units, huh? It's even hitting itself, actually. I think we'll be okay here. Interesting. Yeah, I think we'll be okay.
actually don't want you to die yet. Get your bonk it. Okay, you'll hit the Spooncher and yourself. And Baylor will hit you. Yeah, this is fine. That's uh, definitely not how I meant that fight to go, but we managed to avoid losing. Good job, us. I'll take it. Got injury to Nam and Skaven and Snoffle, but they'll be able to recover. It's fine. Never didn't happen. As long as nothing has thorns, we'll be fine. Also, smackback seems kind of bad. No idea how I'm gonna deal with these. All oh, right, we can just ink it, and there's no sm no smack back then. That's great. Excellent, even. So injured just means they have reduced combat stats for one battle here. Not as bad as you might fear. Turn them to heal, too. Oh, I gotta be careful. Uh, we need to snow Zooka the Warthog right now. Oh, it doesn't... Oh, it doesn't count kills from its own thing, huh? Ah, not as good as I thought. Bummer. Big bummer. It's about to get smack back back. ASAP. some more stuff.
All right, you must be blinded again. Okay, these are dangerous now. to wonder if this is going to work. We've got to find out. Uh, let's put Nam and Stompy in front just in case this does go badly. But I, the idea is the Sunglass Charm gets destroyed by the Hog, which will cause Snoffle to apply snow and stop everything. Bottom attacks first, they say. That's an important distinction. Bottom attacks first. Really? How have I not noticed that so far? Is that? The legendary Golden Kappa? Hello? Hmm? No. Something else is going on today. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so the bottom attacks first. Is that true? I can no longer remember. All right, we'll do it this way. will work either way. Should be top first. Left to right, then top to bottom. Oh, I see. So you're telling me it goes rock hog, wart hog, razor hog, hog? Ah, okay. One, two, three, four, five. That's the least intuitive of all. Sure. Let's go with that. Yes. Also, that doesn't work the way I thought it would. They finish the attack before the thing happens. So we might be dead. Ugh. How annoying. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Times three attack. Now we're just super dead. Right? Well, not yet, actually. Times five. Explain how this is going to work at all. Too late to stop the multi-strike from happening. Hmm. We can do this though, yeah? Burrito burrito. Oh, you're about to act. 
you're gonna kill me on your turn, huh? Uh, yeah, we're just dead. Good talk. Yeah, this game, man, I don't know. Love, hate it is definitely a good description of it. GG. So much cognitive load in playing this. The hogs claim another victim. Back to town we go. Yes, very unforgiving game, definitely. There will be more of this on stream. We're gonna be at least playing until we get the the true ending. Uh, whatever that entails, but that's gonna require being able to get through a run without any uh, mistakes. I think the game encourages very slow paced gameplay to analyze every possibility. Sure. I would call that a, a demerit though, not a not anything else. I would I would consider that personally a, a big demerit. This guy is still convinced Ascension 1 is the hardest. So what do you mean by hardest? Do you mean the other difficulty modifiers actually make the game easier? Or do you mean that just of the difficulties, that one adds the most difficulty? Just try it and see. I mean, already the, the first one already increases your money. So it's, it's already arguably diff, not even a difficulty thing. A classic problem that so many games fail to account for in their design. They've got like a hard mode, but the hard mode makes the enemies higher level. The higher level enemies give you more experience points, causing you to level up more. And that means that hard mode is actually easier than normal mode. There's a dozen different games for which that description is accurate. Um, with hilariously, uh, some of the old, older Pokemon games being the one I can point to first and foremost as an example of that mechanic. Spire giving you more elites equaling more relics, also a pretty good example. Although the rest of the Ascension climb in Spire is, uh, is not that way. But that's right. The first Ascension level in Spire definitely makes the game easier. Don't you wish for an undo button? Oh, so bad. So bad you wish for an undo button. Oh, well. We're going to be back to Wild Frost uh, another time. For today, Twitch chat, that's where I'm going to set the deck builders down. My brain is definitely fried from trying to account for all the different stuff that goes on in a run. I think part of what's challenging about Wild Frost is that you have no resource management going on. There's not... It's not like in, in Slay the Spire where you have a health pool that is being sapped or depleted by fights. In Wild Frost, either your champ is alive and you start at full health, or you perish and the entire run is over. There's no in-between, between a perfect result and a total loss, really. I guess for your, your other units. But there is, there is no, like, buffer that you can accumulate. No endurance, no accumulated resource from being successful in terms of health or durability. It's interesting. Not necessarily a problem. I mean, plenty of games do that. It's just a curious choice. Anywho, we'll be back at it tomorrow, not later than noon Eastern time, my Twitch chat friends. Hope to catch you all then and there. Harder to feel clearly ahead of the curve, uh, because any... No run is safe, right? You can always be insta-killed by any of the enemies because they attack for 10 times your health value all the time. So you have to find ways to avoid the hits. And if you ever fail to do that, it's run over. Odd. Anyhow, GG's and good night, my friends. Toodaloo.